Why hello? Why, hello everybody. My name is McCall, and should this ever surface on the internet, this is my first attempt at GMing a Star Trek Adventures game produced by Modifius. Uh, a couple quick shout-outs I'd like to do. Uh, first of all, thank you to all the players who have agreed to play this game with me. I believe each one of them has far more experience than I do, so we'll all learn from one another. Or rather, I will learn from them. Um, a shout-out to Lee Arundel for creating the station that we are about to play on as well as Falk 2009 for designing the operation center that we are about to set foot into. And beyond that, I believe we start everything with a captain's log. So, Captain, please take it away. Alrighty. Captain's log, start date 82335.1. After overseeing the last of the construction on Deep Space 15, most of Starfleet's construction corps have left en masse to work on other projects, leaving me with a skeleton crew to keep things running until the majority of the station's crew arrives next week. Due to the ship's location, the station's location, in the Lisi Expanse, and being right next to a Borg transport hub, the crew has taken to calling this place Ster Cerberus Station, and I've taken to this namesake as much as the crew has. Supposedly, this commencement ceremony is supposed to be later today, but... With how far out we are from Federation space, I don't expect much turnout from Starfleet Commander or other Federation officials, but I could be surprised. Before I, the commencement, I plan to get to know my senior staff a bit through a quick meeting in the transporter room, and they all seem like accomplished officers. They should serve as fine members of the station. I'll have our new chief engineer, Lieutenant Commander Perrick, come with me to make sure everything goes well with activating our holographic chief medical officer. Dr. Galen Mark 12. I must admit that the location of the station has me a bit nervous. But we wouldn't be Starfleet if we didn't boldly go where no one has gone before. Exploring this transwarp network could bring Starfleet new information and resources that can greatly help their mission. And I'm excited to be at the forefront of something this intriguing. End log. Well spoken, Captain. All right. So the. Bulk of you, um, Captain, as mentioned, has been overseeing the station and will meet you there. Um, the chief medical officer has yet to be activated, but the rest of you have been making your way to the station on board the USS Ushan, a Shran-class uh, diplomatic flagship piloted by Admiral Zier. Uh, Admiral Zier is the overse oversight for the remote starbase initiative for the Beta Quadrant, of which you are all part of. Uh, you, due to the remote location, roughly 400 light years away from Federation space, uh, you have been traveling in Quantum Slipstream Drive for the better part of a day. <clears throat> uh, you are called to the bridge really uh, just as you feel the slight shuddering as the ship D exits or exits the uh, transwarp tunnel to the exterior of the Carceri Nebula, where you will be home, which will be home to you shortly. You should all see that on your screen now. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who has studied uh, astrophysics or has read much about the brief, um, this the Karsari Nebula is pretty similar to the Briar Patch in that it is a fairly hazardous nebula, primarily made of metrion gas and other flammable particles. Uh, it's also similar to the Briar Patch. There is only one real way in or out. Naturally, you're going in. Uh, you dive inside the nebula. Uh, it's a pretty bumpy ride to start with, but as soon as you reach the inside of the ne the eye of the nebula, uh, the ride smooths out as you come face to face with what is going to be your new home soon. And that will be here. Ah, so to set the scene slightly, uh, the quote-unquote eye of the nebula is roughly the radius of Earth's orbit. Uh, the station is set roughly halfway between the and the and, uh, the nebula proper and the eye of the transwarp hub. Uh, the transwarp hub's eye is slightly smaller than the sun is, and far less bright. It it generates no heat. But you are 
uh, even with the structural integrity field at maximum, you guys are feeling a very wild shifts in gravity as the eye or the hub or something you're not entirely sure what is causing massive gravimetric shifts in the region. The Admiral simply laughs as she buckles her seatbelt and advises you all to do the same. The trip in uh, the trip into the station goes as smoothly as possible, pardon the pun. The th nearly three kilometer mu radi diameter mushroom um, opens to admit you inside where finally the bumps cease. Uh, there's a slightly uncomfortable pause as the Admiral realizes, oh yeah, the skeleton crew that actually operates the docking bays have yet to arrive, and in, r herds you all to the transporter room, and where, the, where she has said that the captain will meet you on the Cerberus station. Uh, captain, is there anything you wish to do on the way down to the transporter room? Um, just a quick numbers check, I guess, for out of character stuff. How sure. many people are on the skeleton crew of this station? Right now, there is primarily a um, primarily maintenance teams. Right now, uh, the station could comfortably seat about ten thousand people. Right now, mm -hmm. it's less than five hundred. Alrighty. So it feels uh, your steps echo and reverberate, and much of the station lighting is currently off, just because it makes sense. Right. Um, other than that, I'd probably just be heading straight down the transporter room. Very well. Uh, you are you arrive at the transporter room. The low crew, the only crewman who seems to have rushed ahead of you, is there to meet you. A uh, quick nod from her indicates that she is ready to receive your crew. All right. Uh, well, what rank are they? Just like an ensign. Uh, non-commissioned officer. Okay. Oh, whenever you're ready, bring them aboard. Very well. There's a hum. Uh, there is the traditional hum of the transporter. As four shapes materialize, I say four because uh, the Admiral hasn't put it over yet. There we go. Uh, four shapes beam over. Uh, we may as well start at the top of the rank. Um, First up is a Zendi Reptilian, Commander Dolroom. And if you could just quickly describe your character, please. Sure. Uh, Commander Dolroom, uh, age 53, so slightly older, although in the world of Star Trek, not terribly old. Um, pretty much grew up on a starbase uh, around Zindi, uh, was, made it through the academy served on a ship and that ship quickly got taken out when the borg invaded um after that he bounced around uh, uh between planets and then uh was on a station for about nine years until uh his commanding officer put his name in the hat for um exo of this station uh kind of unbeknownst to him, and it was too good of an offer not to take it, so that is why he is here. Excellent. And then the chief engineer will be a Bolian, Lieutenant Commander Issen Perrick, I believe. And could you describe your character, please? Absolutely. So Issen is tall and broad for a Bolian. Uh, typically, when you've seen them in the past, they've been sort of heavy set, And he's got that frame, but he's clearly paid attention when he had to do the physical uh, labor portion of Starfleet Academy. Uh, he carries himself pretty casually, and he looks like a very friendly guy. Uh, he just also happens to be dark blue, bald, and with little white lines uh, up his, uh, starting at the top of his forehead and going all the way back the the back of his head. Hmm. Very well. Um, next up is the uh, designated chief, chief science officer, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett. Well, one Lieutenant Marcus Sullivan Barnett stands about 5'8". Uh, the moment he has started to completely materialize, he looks around both at sort of the top of the transporter panels and just around the room in general, just a sort of quick, shifty observation of where he is. Um, in, uh, 
reasonably well tri- uh, trimmed beard and also he probably has a just a little bit of uh, not quite the Picard maneuver but he is certainly smoothing down his uniform just a little bit making sure his atoms are still there very well <clears throat> And I believe that the final person to materialize is a the master is the chief of security, Master Chief Ember. Indeed. Uh, so kind of a slight departure from everyone else at this point. Uh, master Chief Ember uh, materializes and almost completely takes up the transporter pad because she is built like a linebacker and stands close to eight feet tall. Uh, she has red skin, uh, vibrant white hair, uh, golden horns, uh, two sets of them. And, uh, you know, she also has sort of back spines and sort of raptor-like feet. Uh, for those who are unaware of the fact, uh, I am playing a custom race that is a allusion to uh, my past experiences with Tabletop RPG. Uh, McCall has been gracious enough to let me try them out. Uh, she is a cornet, which, if you know it, uh, if you know Cornet Quest, yeah, it's Ember. Um, but, you know, as she materializes, looks around, uh, she actively uh, cracks her knuckles and uh, cracks her neck and says, It's a little bit cramped. I expected more. And f- uh, the four of you materialize, and you see a, a smiling figure uh, wearing the pips of a captain, and that, who, by process of elimination, you would believe would be Captain Crawford. What does Captain Crawford look like? Uh, Captain Crawford is a fairly young human for being a captain. He looks like he's probably about his, looking at him, about late 20s, early 30s. Uh, Average build, average height, about 5'10". And he kind of looks everybody over. Oh, it's good to have you here. Looks like you'll make a good senior staff for me and kind of takes a Quick look at a data pad that he's holding. Ah, uh, um, and he looks up at the bullion. Uh, you must be our chief engineer, uh, Lieutenant Commander Parrot, correct? That it is, sir. Um, I'm actually going to need you to come with me about right now. I'll need your help activating our CMO, and I'm not much of an engineer, so I want to make sure everything goes smoothly. This is the hologram, right? I'm. I'm very excited about this. I spent a ton of time on the way here reading all all about Galen's particular hollow matrix. I'm very interested. So count me in. Uh, now? Now? Is that good? Um, if you're able to, and he looks to the rest of my... I look to the rest of my senior staff. Uh, would you like to come along as well, or do you have other duties that you'd like to attend to? Next? I will accompany you, sir. Um. Ordinarily, I'd prefer to get settled into the lab, but maybe it's good to know who the doctor is around here. Uh, real quick, am I uh, am I roboting? A little. Uh, you're not every on my now end. then, but you're you're good right now. Okay, I might have to restart on my end, but uh, no. So uh, Ember just steps off the pad without even prompting and almost starts walking past the captain, but not quite. And says, well, you'll have me in case we activate another psycho, you know, psychopathic hologram. It wouldn't be the first time. I can almost guarantee you that that won't happen, Master Chief. Um, you all follow me. All right. You are, uh, the captain leads you to down the uh, major, ah, the captain leads you out from deck two, where the transporter, where the closest transporter room is to ops. And leads you downstairs, um, down the main turbo shaft, into the area which will probably be populated with shops and other civilian-based services fairly soon. However, right now it is still very empty and cavernous. But the sick, uh, the sick bay's lights are on, and there is a welcoming glow about them as you enter. And I have the infirmary somewhere. There it is. Here we go. Ready. All right. This is uh, quite the establishment. Well, when you're taking care of a station that can hold about 10,000 people, you're 
going to need quite a big sick bay. That does make sense. All right, give me just a moment here to pull up the doctor's interface, and we'll get him up. Wait, is Galen to him? I hadn't considered. Hmm. Um, I'm sure he'll tell. Him. They'll tell. Him. <clears throat> I apologize, sir. You can expect hypothetical questions from me often. Oh, it's perfectly fine. And I assume activating Galen is as simple as like going up to a panel or just like giving a voice command. Yep, pretty much. Awesome. Then, yeah, I just walk up to a terminal and uh, run through the uh, the specific stuff I gotta do to make. Gal- All right. Um, just because I find it funny, uh, roll me an insight engineering test, please. Uh, difficulty zero. All righty, just a moment while I try to remember how to roll die. And the, sh- the station will assist if someone wishes to grab the station uh, with, I believe, sis- uh, computer plus medical. I'm I on it. All complications and he deletes my program. <laughs> no. no. Either that or it, it makes a very tiny doctor. <laughs> Don't give me ideas now. The tiniest doctor. All right. Um, I guess always a focus with the station. That's correct. Should be the ship roll. Yep. All right. Brief instruction from the... uh... From, or well, for the engineer. Mm-hmm. How are we rolling exactly? This so is a, a, on, your, a, uh, on your character sheet. Uh, you should see uh, if you just click on Insight, and then it should prompt you for a uh, department. In which case, then you can draw, select uh, Engineering from the drop down. Gotcha. And then you select the dice from there. Okay, perfect. Yep. Figured out. All right, and. Do, uh, what focuses do you have by chance? Uh, the only ones that I see that might relate here are actually is systems engineering. That's close enough. Yep, so that will apply. All right. Ooh, okay, so as it was a difficulty zero, you now have a grand total of three successes, which means you have three momentum. Um, if I had planned ahead, I would have created a, a little momentum deck for someone to keep track of those numbers, which I, I have forgot to do so. Head and I'm writing it down. So we're good. I appreciate that. I will have one ready for next time. <clears throat> ready. Oh. I'm also keeping track of it on my character sheet. That mm-hmm. works. Okay. okay. Um, Galen. Mm-hmm. Uh, your first experience is materializing in front of five uh, individuals who you quick who your algorithms quickly um, identify. He'll do a quick glance at everyone within that split second of him fully materializing and smile. Like, is there anything I can assist you with today? Um, we were just taking to make sure that you're online and okay. Uh, how are you feeling, Galen? Positively fine. I have to say, I've never head. worked with it. Sorry, go ahead. We're able to slowly tilt his head and smile every, at everyone. And what does Galen look like? Galen stands around 6'2", six 6'1", six you know, depending on what mood he's in. Uh, he looks like a human. Uh, short blonde hair. Uh, defining features. Uh, the outfit he's in, though, is uh, not the typical uniform everyone else is in right now. He's in what looks to be an old uniform outfit, just a holdover from his time at the uh, Days from Interested. In- interest- in- I can't say that word, apparently. Institute? <laughs> Institute, thank you. <laughs> uh, he looks like he's um, with the gray shoulders, you know, the DS9 uniform, but he'll cock his head. And uh, his body will shimmer, and he'll change over to the Odyssey style. And here I was about to volunteer to fix that for you. 
Oh, no need. I come fully equipped with a bunch of self-repair programs to my hollow matrices. After all, I don't need someone deleting any particular lines of code that might alter me. We don't want my ethical subroutine being misplaced now, do we? I feel like no, that would don't. be a very bad thing. I think it would be. Yes, it's a useful thing, too. I hear doctors make the worst patients. It certainly seems that way. But that uh, that's all right. I, I am completely fine leaving your maintenance to you. However, I do hope that you'll ask me if you ever need any. I certainly will. And I look forward to our collaborations. He keeps growing and shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened with my token? <laughs> uh, GM Tomfoolery, a.k.a. a couple of misaligned hollow emitters. They are quickly found and rectified. <laughs> uh, Captain? When yes, Doc. the crew is fully aboard the vessel of the station, I would much appreciate everyone reporting for a physical at the earliest convenience. Uh, families, though, of the crew can show up when they can. That seems perfectly acceptable, Doctor. I'll make sure we're the first couple in. Little smile, like excellent. I think, it's, like uh, we had talked about before, we have shipwide hollow emitters. You do, station. yes. Okay, cool. Uh, for precisely a reason that is about to become apparent. Okay. As shortly after the conversation occurs, uh, there is a slight ping as a, a, trans a transparent blue female a, sort of just a, materializes in a similar fashion that the doctor did. I had detected the activation of a, of a holographic program. I had assumed it was the Galen program. Mm -hmm. Greetings. It is a pleasure to meet another holographic representation. Pleasure to meet you as well. I am simply called Galen, though. Understood. Captain and Lieutenant Commanders. Commander. She just names each one of you by na my name and rank. Apologies. I am Rami. Read only memory dash intelligence. Should you ever need a... I'm programmed with a intuition interface. Attempted to... I, and it is my ability to sort, process, and find patterns in large amounts of data. I'm... You may assume that I am simply part of the computer system. Hmm. Well, it's incredible to meet you, Rami. Honestly, this is... Yeah, you and, and the doctor here are frankly, modern technological marvels. I'm super excited to be working with It is a pleasure. I look forward to working with you. Do you have any require any questions? Are there any other holograms like you guys on the board? Not to my knowledge. However, there are currently 32 instances of my program running, primarily assisting the maintenance crews tracking down small system instabilities. Galen will just smile. Um, I was like, I don't think other programs are going to be quite like me. And Rami, that's quite impressive. I can only duplicate two more times before my system kind of doesn't like that. I'll have to look at your duplicating hollow matrices is often one of the most difficult portions of hol uh, holography. I'm frankly impressed that you can do it's very little trouble um as i am only a nah, as i am a representation of the computer core itself rather than a indi as a as an separate artificial intelligence uh very little resources are required to maintain a body hence why she looks down you can see right through me right so so your your brain is the station, and then all we're seeing is an avatar. Isn't it? That that is correct. I already knew that. I just wanted everyone else to know. Uh, she smiles a little bit and looks around. This may not have been the best uh, venue for a first meeting. However, I, this is the f 
first grouping the, the entire senior staff, and I wish to introduce myself. I shall see you anon. And she disappears in a cloud of uh, computer-generated pixie dust. Oh. This job just furrows his brow just slightly. I am so excited to work with her. Like, I'm not even kidding. This job just got interesting. Apparently very much so. Uh, there mm. is the... Uh, as you turn to leave, the uh, the captain's comm badge chirps. And a female voice comes over. Um, this is Admiral Zier calling... Uh, Captain Crawford. Uh, this is Crawford. Go ahead. I'm in the process of securing the ship, and I will be, uh, t uh, and I will be to the heading to the station shortly. The commencement will begin in roughly two hours. There will not be a big crowd. As I thought there would. Um, it'll be good to see you, Admiral. Indeed. I would suggest taking the time, show the crew around the station. And if you'd like to have a quick meet and greet session in the conference room, you can reach it through Ops. Alrighty. Well, thank you, Adam. I'll see you in a couple hours. Very well. Mm -hmm. Um. Now you. So it's up up to each of you where you would like to go. Uh, this I have pretty much all the major set pieces in place. If you'd like to check out your. If Ember would like to check out the security office, or if you'd like, all, all like to go to Ops, mm -hmm. uh, Station um, Refinery. The others are free to do what they want, but Ember's just going to get the physical portion over with now, so she'll just kind of linger in the back as everyone may or may not filter out. I think Peric's going to head to Operations just to get a lay of the land. As mm -hmm. will I. And I think I'll actually do the same as Ember and get my physical out of the way now before the commencement ceremony so we don't have to worry about it okay so that was crawford and ember sticking around uh lieutenant sullivan barnett will upon stepping out behind the other two officers seeing them go one way towards ops will turn the opposite direction run over to a computer pad for a turbo lift as he is headed down to deck 99. Ah. And what happens to be on deck 99? Astrometrics. Uh, excellent. Okay, so splitting the party. Excellent. Um, uh, do we wish to have the scene of the physical or shall we just assume it happens? I mean, I'd that, personally, that is I'd entirely up to Galen, really. I don't know what he had in mind. It was just a thing I could toss out there for, you know, scenes. Uh, I'm all for it. physicals. Uh, we're already in sick base, so we may as well take care of the physicals first. Alright. So I guess uh, I guess Ember, Ember will go first, and she just kind of steps through Galen, uh, making it rather clear very quickly that she doesn't think very highly of holograms, and says, alright, Doctor, where are we doing this? I'd like to get this over with as quick as possible. Hmm. Mind you, that again for just for a second. She rolls her eyes and does it once more. He's gonna increase his field integrity to full. Hmm. Well, of course, I don't know if uh, the Master Chief can still do it, but she'll definitely try. So I don't know if you want to make that a roll, or we just want to say, you know, full fiat. He is solid. Whatever, whichever way you'd prefer. That's. I will leave that up to the players to decide how they wish to react. How do you want to do it? I'm all for it. Uh, tell you what, let's roll an opposed uh, d20, and whoever is the lowest uh, will quote-unquote win. Well, I mean, if I'm going to roll Ooh. a 19, yeah, you're pretty solid. He just smiles and pats you on the shoulder. He's like, I'm glad you get to go first. Please have a seat. Just and so um, Arcs an eyebrow and Goes to sit down. You just look to the captain for a second and look back towards em Ember and start doing a full deep scan of her. All right. So, I mean, she's in tip-top physical state. I mean, uh, cornets, by their very nature, are quote-unquote marvels of uh, medical uh, information. Well, 
as much as you can glean from them anyway. Uh, why they might be warriors that uh, sometimes surpass Klingons, the problem is, is that their bodies are a little bit harder to treat medically. So, you know, you are getting some information, but it's almost as if your scans are being uh, reflected back at you as you, uh, you know, run your tricorder over her. Hmm. Well, as far as I can see, and you seem to be a comparable baseline for Morse Cornet, so, I'm going to give you a pass. One thing, though, mm. I will schedule an appointment with the counselor, starting once she's in. Doctor, I'm going to tell you this the same way I tell it to every other chief medical officer that tries to saddle me with counseling. I don't have a problem. I don't need counseling. And for the love of whatever deity you as a hologram hold it dear, do not force me into counseling. Perfect. That's an order. <laughs> Sir, I look at the captain for confirmation. <clears throat> well, should he deem it fit for counseling? Uh, you should go, but uh, you haven't done anything that says otherwise that you would need it. So, doctor, uh, should something arise with her temper, I'm sure we can arrange something for counseling. I'm sure you should be perfectly fine with doing a couple of sessions just to establish a baseline. Now nah, that's how it starts. They say, oh, Ember, you're too angry, or oh, Ember, you can't do that, and what do you know? Crawford just kind of holds up his hand as Ember starts ranting. It's just like... Just, Sorry, sir. It, it's perfectly all right. Um, Galen, we'll just leave her for now, and if we both see fit that she should get counseling, we'll arrange it. Very well. You're dismissed, Ember. Thank you, Doctor. Captain. And uh, she nods at the captain, and then, unless stopped, she's going to go find uh, whatever fares for security on the station. Excellent. Captain's captain. turn, I believe. Yep. Tell me, Captain, would you give the same relaxed orders to an individual who just pushed past a, a living doctor. I'm just... Quite frankly, doctor, it's been a while since I've gotten a good night of sleep, and I'm just trying to make sure that we all get along. You're as accomplished as any other doctor, and I probably would have said about the same thing. She didn't try to attack you. She simply... He kind of sighs. I'm still getting slightly used to having a holographic doctor. My apologies. She walked through me like I wasn't there. That is a sign of disregard for my being. If I am to make sure everyone is fine, I have to evaluate everyone, physically and mentally. What she did, in a sense, was... A form of disrespect. If this happened to any other doctor, I'm sure their orders would have been countermanded in front of them. I wish to see exactly why she has this state of mind, understand where she's coming from, and then devise a plan. I plan on having a psych evaluation done for everyone at some point. But if we are going to be on this front door to this fun location. I need to know that everyone under your command will be fine, and you need to know that as well. We will be dealing with triggers, instances where we cannot alter the outcome of events. I need to know if people are going to be stable for that, and in turn, you need to know as well. But I can't do my job if I am treated like a program. Of course, Doctor. I'll talk to her myself, and for some reason she decides to still show discrimination against you, well, I'll put your orders back in. Very well. So, let's take a look at you. You said you can't sleep. Um, out of character, it's more just like, I guess, 
less sleep from stress of overseeing the construction of the station. Uh, it's not like anything that would be some kind of sickness, just might just need a little extra rest, but after that, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll do a scan on you. He's like, So, youngest captain to have a star base under his belt, you're having difficulty sleeping because of the stress. Might I offer you a suggestion? Uh, fire away, Doctor. You have a command staff. Let them command. Let them oversee some projects while you get rest. After the ceremony, and I'm going to give you one day. If you do not have a good rest tonight, I will order you a shorter shift. I think that's completely fair, Doctor. Um, now that I have an executive officer on this station, uh, I'm sure I can do that, and he can handle the station just fine on his own. He's very accomplished. He'll just give you a nice smile. It's like, I look forward to working with everyone and hopefully growing closer as a community. This will be an interesting experience, not only for you, but for me as well. I get to see life in all shapes, forms, and variety. And hopefully it's all positive. But I will expect a not so happy. And on that note, let's do a scene change. So we are heading, I believe, if I recall correctly, uh, Commander Dolrum and Lieutenant Commander Peric were heading to ops? I, yeah. I think so. All right. Then you guys are going to be the first to see the ops center. And apparently there's a giant Galen here. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his brother. I said, like this is stock. how it starts. You piss off a hologram, next thing you know. <laughs> he's he's our Spock. Spock in the animated series. Yeah. <laughs> Infinite oh. hologram. Okay. Uh, you step out on to deck one, the ops center. And this is the uh, shout out to Falk that I had given for earlier. <clears throat> uh, it overlooks, uh, there is a series of large bay windows that unf for either fortunately or unfortunately overlook the eye. Um, However, if you wish, there are shutter shields that could be engaged to close the uh, close them. Uh, there are can't see it. Oh, it would actually help if I actually moved you to ops instead of leaving us in sick bay. There we go. I am still new Ooh. with roll twenty, folks. Please be patient. Oh, is this one he's doing from scratch? This is the one he's doing from scratch. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed with this that's awesome i'm yeah i you know i came up with the base design but he's the one breathing life into it so props to falk i say awesome. agree <clears throat> uh, so there's the several command terminals on the main level that you have come up uh, there are several auxiliary consoles at the secondary levels uh, there are Fleet control and transwarp hub monitoring stations at the very base of ops. And in the center, there is a high fidelity uh, hollow screen, which replaces the traditional uh, view screens. If you head up one level, there is the command terminal and then the captain's office. And then there's a large the catwalk while heading around the back of the station, which will lead to the conference room. Uh, you will notice that there. this is a fully accessible station. Um, there are stairs at some places, but there are ramps and even a grav lift that will bring non-bipedal species to the upper level if necessary. And given the fact that there is no support crew, uh, it is currently staffed by you guys. Marvelous engineering in here. I absolutely agree. I'm terribly interested in all He'll start, like, mumbling to himself and just moving over to the closest, uh, like, full-service console available in the room and just start getting status reports and everything. This is his first time on the station, so he just needs to know what, what 
is considered a, you know, standard. I'm going to start just walking around. I'm going to make my way down to the bottom level. All right. Uh, you look uh, as you look out the window. You you catch glimpses of Federation buoys that have been uh, placed out there as sensor enhancers to uh, allow better a more thorough glimpse of the eye of the Carceri Nebula. It's um, even as you walk, uh, you've given the station size and durability. You still feel the occasional. Um, wave of gravity as it passes over the station, but it's no more than a shallow wave uh, passing over a large ship, or passing under a large ship, I should say. It'll take a few minutes, a couple days for you to find your sea legs, but... <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Commander Issen Perrick, you are poking away at the end, at the terminals. That's correct. All right. Um, there is a, it's just uh, at the moment, a fairly comprehensive station uh, MSD. There is, all systems are operating about 80 to 85 percent, well within standard operating procedures for handing over control of a new station. Excellent. Now, have there been any recent maintenance issues or anything that, you know, I would care? Uh, there is nothing that has been flagged as critical. Uh, there are a few things labeled urgent, such as the um, redundant power systems working through uh, the refinery are not in full operation yet. Uh, half the docking bays don't seem to be extending their uh, airlock sh clamps yet. And, the, and overall, life support is running at bare minimum when... Uh, the decks uh, configured for non-Class M environments are actually attempting to work at non-Class M environments. Also, no one, also, you see a small report that no one has actually watered the Arboretum in about three days. Well, I have to fix that, he'll say out loud. Fix what? Oh, the Arboretum. Hasn't had uh, hasn't had water in a few days. I know the person I'll have to send down there eventually. Anyway, what's the status of the stations, Lieutenant Commander? Everything looks more or less. Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Everything looks fine. It it's not at a hundred percent, but given that the station has a fraction of its crew and the person responsible for its repair has just stepped onto the station. It's in actually fine condition. I'd only really be concerned about those plants in the Arboretum, really. Unless we plan on taking on like a hundred ships all at once. Bite your tongue, because it might just happen. Uh, Commander Dalrum, yeah. um, as you walk past the tactical console, there is a small chime as you look down at it, it's it says command authority recognized. Only commanders and captains have the authority to fire the transphasic torpedoes. What are those? That you would be that. An, um, <laughs> that would be an insight security, I believe. When we'll do difficulty, let's do difficulty zero. That's good because my insight is crap. Uh, would my starboard tactical systems focus come into play Absolutely. here? That's one success. Uh, roughly 30 years ago, it is well recorded that the Borg decided that the Alpha Quadrant, no or the major species in the Alpha Quadrant, were no longer worthy of assimilation. Instead, the Borg Collective decided that extermination was the name of the game and sent roughly 7,000 cubes to try to annihilate it. <clears throat> uh, the, the transphasic torpedo was 
mm-hmm. magically produced by Starfleet Command in order to fight the Borg. Its origins as a 25th century weapon were only revealed after the fact. Uh, transphasic torpedoes proved very effective against the Borg, managed to bypass the collective's adaptation protocols for far longer than any other weapon did. However, uh, due to the power of the weapon, um, Starfleet attempted to curtail its use after the uh, threat was neutralized by the Saliar. Um, however, uh, there was no order to return the warheads, which led to a very disturbing confrontation with the brain. I believe it would be four or five years after the fact. Uh, Starfleet Command therefore passed a general order to rescind use of the uh, transphasic torpedo, except in cases which would be ratified by the Federation Council. Um, Looking through the records, Starbase Deep Space 15, given its location to a Borg transwarp hub, despite the fact that the Borgs themselves haven't been seen in 30-some-odd years, it was determined that the that this was a good a station as any to have transphasic torpedoes. However, they can only be fired with the commander or captain's direct authorization. Mechanically, that means you guys get an extremely powerful warhead that negates all Borg resistance. However, it costs five threat to... Uh, you generate five threat if you wish to fire one. Oh boy, escalation. Woohoo. Uh, I look through the console and uh, also look through uh, the various other armaments that we have on station and just say out loud, station looks well armed. Good if we need it. We're out here alone. We might need it. All right. And finally, I believe we were going to go down into astrometrics slash ah, astrometrics slash stellar cartography. That we were. All right. That if is down. Here. You want to use the exposition bit? I'm going to properly reconnect my um, my Discord here now that the internet decided to jump back on. Yay, internet! Okay, we jump to stellar cartography. <clears throat> It is a fairly sizable uh, tube structure that expands uh, two stories upwards and one full story down. Uh, the most notable uh, most notable feature is the wall is entirely circular and has a fairly comprehensive uh, star chart layout of the lo- local systems around the uh, Carceri Nebula. Um, due to uh, a lack of proper exploration during construction, that not much has been done to explore the area. You might ask how a station in the middle of a nebula happens to know what the heck is going on outside the nebula. That would be a very good question to ask, and the answer is a series of sensor probes have been sent out. And also, any ship that enters the Carceri Nebula, well, sh- any Federation's ship will automatically download its astrometrics data to the station. And it would help if I put the token on here. That's I token. would indeed love to step into this room. All right, and step into it you do. Ah, pay no attention to the blue guy uh, at the console. He is not there. That's fine. I wouldn't pay attention to anyone that was in the room anyway. Um, could you? Uh, could I ask you to please roll? Uh, what would be a good thing to do? That would be a. Uh, could you please roll an insight and either security or command, whichever one you wish. Okay. Well, with Marcus taking in everything in this room, I think that command would. Uh, I'd go for the better stat in this case. That's fair enough. Uh, this will be a difficulty one, I should say. Okay. Um, I doubt any of my focuses would be applicable in this case, so I shall roll without. That's one success. You make it. You uh, you take a look up at one of the holographic representations of a class uh, a class, uh, 
a Sol class star. And notice that there is something flickering about behind it. Um, it uh, a beaked face sort of pops out from behind. As this individual appears. I am momentarily spooked. <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, so is she, actually. Uh, she sort of squawks. Uh, you, you, once you are not spooked, uh, you realize two things. Uh, one, she is a score, a race of bird-like people that are nominally, they're trading members with the Federation, but not official members, although they have been on good terms for at least a century since the incident with the Enterprise. Uh, the oh. second thing you notice is that she has, or she's wearing an ensign's uniform, but the uniform is not that of the uh, current station. I recognize the era of the uniform or what it yeah. corresponds to. It's a construction type. It's a, cons it's a durable fabric used by the con uh, Starbase construction crew. Okay. Uh, she flutters down and if she could blush, she would and says, Sir, please don't report me. I, I just wanted to see this thing one more time, and then they left. Well, okay, I may have convinced them that I left with them. The holographic decoy, decoy is probably gone now. Oh, um, so the, a stowaway. I mean, it it's fine. I, I get it. This This is really, really shiny and cool, and I... I know, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, ooh, th that's all he can uh, think to say. <laughs> Just kind of uh, squints his uh, eyes. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Uh, she, uh, she's only she. Uh, you're what? Was it six foot? How high are you? Five foot nine. Five nine. Actually. So she's roughly on on size with you. Uh, she cla uh, pulls her wings back in a um act of contrition, and sort of bow slightly. I am Ensign er Eral. Um, I'm in charge of constructing the astrometrics lab, and quite frankly, this is the third one I've constructed, and I've always wanted to see one in use. But the commander didn't want to let me go, so, well, they sort of hid. Please, please don't report me. And uh, I'm I'm, I mean, I'm kind of a stickler for protocol, but I'm, like, honestly, I, I can appreciate, appreciate the sciences and the devices that get us there, or that help us find that. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of um, let this kind of slide. He starts moving his hands as he tries to say this. He's, like, trying to um, give reassuring gestures, but it just looks messy as he continues to speak here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So you, you build these things. Um, well, that's yes. cool. Um, yes, for flying species, there's not many places where I could actually fly, aside from maybe the shuttle bays or space. But have you seen void suits for us? Very com uncomfortable. And um, if you wish to fly too, sir, uh, the holograph, the um, stellar cartography is a gravity is a variable gravity environment. You can change its gravity as you wish. You're you're saying I can adjust the grav plates in here? That that sounds horrible. Oh, it, uh, I was already kind of regretting coming down here. To, it, not because of you, or because of the station. I like I I love this lab here, but uh, like, do you, do you feel those waves? Like the the little pitch in the hull plating every so often. Every now and then, I guess, but I like flying. And, well, uh, you know, I'm. I spent years. Uh, I spent years on a survey ship, and you know, it was, it was a small little thing, but we had good inertial dampeners. Uh, the only time I had an issue was when we were going on shuttle missions, and sometimes the pilot would pull uh, little pricks, give er, like little pranks on me, uh, give a little bump. Uh, I rode this whole way into the nebula. Um, Powerful anti nauseum men, and I, I, I kind of, 
I, I didn't realize there was still going to be some of this once we got on board. Well, I'm sure that the engineers will figure it out eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half an AU from a uh, gravimetric anomaly in the middle of one of the most inhospitable environments, even for our best ships and stations. And I guess you can't ask her everything. She would shrug if she could. Well, no, sir. But then again, I could be uh, demoted if they found out what I've done. I hope you can speak to the captain for me. That would be... I'd like to stay here, if you'll have me. Oh, well, uh, I mean, I could talk to him. You might be, uh, I guess, speaking to the engineer, the... Oh, well, I am so bad with names. I think it was Lieutenant Commander Perrick in this case. I, I might be able to talk to the commander, see it about getting you in a good space. Uh, just just answer me one question. I should is talk this to lab, one side. Yes. Is this lab otherwise ready to go? Like, is everything fully functional at this point? Absolutely, sir. I can call up any of the nearby systems that we've charted. Uh, computer, please bring up a di please bring up a schematic of let's go uh, sector four st uh, stellar ah stellar object five and a full holographic representation of a super super red giant and five planets appears all in perfect holographic fidelity. Oh, uh, I'm home. This is this is it. I made it. I'm I'm here. And just like that, the, sh the station buckles just ever so slightly. Oh, oh, uh, Barnett goes a little bit pale at that. Listen. <laughs> I'll talk to the captain, just, uh, you can come in here again when I'm not occupied with this, but, uh, moment alone with my machinery, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I will leave you to it, sir. And she'll back out and vanish out one of the corridors. And I'll run a, uh, like... Along the railing, just to verify that there is, in fact, no dust on the panels whatsoever. Mm. Like to see it spotless. Mm. A few, a few things of grease were missed at some point or another, but a quick uh, disinfectant wipe, and the railing is perfectly clean. I carry those on me, so that does not surprise me. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. Let the science begin. Does anybody have any scenes they would wish, any places they'd like to see before the commencement ceremony begins? Um, Ember would like to at least get a glance at the security office. Absolutely. We can do that. Uh, the security, security office is here. Ah, nice and expansive. I love it. It's it's a uh, it is located uh, one deck below all the civilian, uh, the for lack of a better term for the time being the promenade uh, for rapid response to deal with any civilian uh, disturbances. There are uh, the brig is uh, located one deck below in a um, further secure facility, and there are uh, you pull up a small section ah you pull up a schematic of the map to find out that there are several uh, secure armories located at strategic points should you need to design a rapid defense. Alright. Uh, who's on duty at the moment? Uh, who is on duty indeed? There is um, one of the support characters. Which one was he? Um, I believe that was... Yeah. Uh, oh. Lieutenant Dura could work. Thank you. Yep. Uh, meeting you almost eye to eye is a species also not really seen too often within the Federation. It is a Kelpian. Hmm. 
And uh, there is Master. There is Master Chief Ember's token. Standing roughly seven foot five. And um, the Kelpians traditionally have a very lithe form, meant for high sprints or high sprints and um, quick reactions. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be much different, except that her uh, bulk is significantly wider than that of the few Kelpians you may have encountered in your time. Uh, she looks you up and down, and realizing quickly who you are, and she will stand up and give you a quick salute. Uh, real quick check, uh, do they have crewman colors or officer colors? Uh, this one is an... This one is a crewman. Okay. Eddie's crewman, uh, what can you tell me about the situation here? I want to sit rep before I possibly get into a meeting with the Admiral. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there's not many security officers have arrived yet, sir. But then again, there's not really much to secure. Uh, station tactical systems are fully functional. Uh, station for, uh, intruder protection measures are at 90%. Uh, we have lo with a uh, problems with docking bays one, three, seven, and four. Uh, there, uh, for some reason, those airlocks are not fully sealing, nor are the intruder force fields working properly. Uh, all armories have been outfitted with their standard loadout, and all have been tested to specification. Going back for a second, you said something was ninety percent. Why is that not higher? Well, sir, as the the security defenses are also for the force fields uh, surrounding several non-critical systems, such as the <clears throat> uh, such as the currently uninhabited civilian areas, as well as several of the un um, uh, ah, the not filled out or the uh, unfurnished storage fronts, as there has been nothing put into them yet. We are unable to fully secure them because we're not yet sure what needs the eventual inhabitants will require. Ah, you should be more clear about that in the future because when I hear something like 90%, I'm thinking as the chief of the boat would, because if I bring a figure like 90% to the captain or the commander or hell, even an admiral, they're going to want to know why. Because as you may know, crewman, brass likes big numbers, like 100% numbers. So be very clear in the future. Sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. You're fine, crewman. I just want to make my intentions clear from the get-go. I have been known as a hard-ass, but I hope that you will come to find that it is for a reason. Uh, you said that all the weapon lockers were outfitted for standard complement? That's correct, sir. Uh, 20 Type 3 phasers, uh, 30 Type 2s, and 50 Type 1s. I would like you, or at least a team, to go through and replace all of the Type 3s with compression phaser rifles. I have been in too many situations where Type 3s in a dampening field are rendered useless. Thus, I would like replacement with compression phaser rifles. Uh, she does a quick tap on the uh, console. Yes, sir, that will be done within uh, six hours. Very good. And one final thing. Uh, well, two final things. I don't believe I caught your name, Crewman. Uh, Crewman Dura, sir. Crewman Dura, are you first class, second class, third class? Uh, second class, sir. I was one of the few left behind from the uh, when the material uh, department left. Understood. I've, I've now, uh, once the captain signs off, I will transfer to you, sir. Very well. Uh, until I'm given a much larger staff, Dura, uh, I'm going to be relaying my wishes to the rest of the security people through you. I would like a meeting uh, approximately two hours after the commencement ceremony with every single security personnel possible. Uh, there are some expectations I would like to set forth and make sure that we are, quote-unquote, happy with one another. Of course, sir. I look forward to this, sir. Very good. And, uh, you know, Amber takes a look around. I understand we have a gymnasium? Uh, yes, sir, we do. Hmm. Um, it is a fairly sizable one. And GM note, I do not seem to have made a set piece for this, so I will have to import that. No, oh, there's, uh, there's a very one on the nice right one. side of the map. Ah, yes, the the sparring ring, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. 
tell me, crewman, what are the weights rated for? Uh, rates uh, uh, depends, sir, if you are interested in working out by yourself or in a shared environment. Uh, the while the the yeah, the maximum weight I per free weight is 150. However, the grav plating can be increased to a grand total up to 5 Gs to further increase the challenge. Hmm. Well, uh, if I know Starfleet efficiency like I think I do, uh, I should have some personal effects that should have arrived at my quarters. Please see to it that they are brought down and uh, installed within the workout room slash sparring area. Uh, no offense to anyone who uses the existing weights, but I have found that they are quite useless for someone like me. She. Yes, sir. I'm afraid I've never worked with a cornet before, and I look forward to seeing what you can do, sir. Hmm. Pray you never get in the sparring wing, sparring ring with me. And uh, I just sort of smile, and then unless she stops me, I walk out to go see the commencement ceremony. All right. Any further scenes? I'm good. I'm good as well. All right. So, the commencement scene shall take place at Ops. We shall gather all the folks. Okay. As the captain in as the captain enters the bridge, uh, you find you see the Admiral Zier standing atop at the command podium. Uh, the, uh, she, to, as this is the first in-game appearance you see of her, uh, she is an Andorian female, uh, roughly fifty years of age. Uh, her most, or her two most distinguishing features is she has an eye patch, and she has a fairly uh, disfigured scar along one side of her neck. <clears throat> uh, she is currently standing like she owns the place because technically she does. Very well. As there, as I am a currently the most high-ranking individual on this station. No bureaucrats, diplomats, presidents, or anything in between have decided to join us for reasons that should be very apparent. Um, <clears throat> uh, Captain, uh, it's a pleasure of my... Ah, it has been my pleasure to oversee the development of the Remote Starbase Initiative for the uh, Beta Quadrant. Starbase or Deep Space 15 is the first to come online, which is very surprising given that it is in the most challenging of the construction zones under my uh, oversight. It's, I've, I sense that there will be much to learn from this it, place, and if we could find the whatever happened to the Enterprise E that probably went through one of those gates, that would be greatly appreciated. As you can tell, I'm not one for long speeches, ceremonies, or the like. So I, I officially declare Starbase Deep Space 15. And she pulls out a dedication plaque. Officially commissioned. And she'll slap it right on the side of the captain's office door. Captain Niles Crawford, I hereby offer command of this station to you. And I'll take this command with the highest of honors, Ab. And she will step down and proffer the podium to you if you wish to make a speech. Okay. Uh, he'll kind of slowly walk up. Um, much like the Admiral, I'm not much one. Eh, not much for long speeches myself. So I'll make this short and sweet, and we can get to work. Um, looking at me, you can. I'm a bit young for this position, but I know the importance of this station's mission here at the Carceri Nebula and the Borg Transwarp hub that's right near us. And I can tell you this one thing. All of us are at the forefront of something very new and very important. 
We are here to start explorations of the vast regions of the Lisi Expanse using this hub and seeing just how far we can go. We are doing something here that has been echoed by the likes of James Tiberius Kirk and Jean-Luc Picard. Boldly going where no man has gone before. I look forward to working with all of you and getting to know you better. And you all seem like accomplished officers to be as part of my senior staff. Godspeed to Deep Space 15, and Godspeed to the Federation. Let's get things done. And he will step down. Somehow the Admiral has produced a bottle of champagne, which she will pass to uh, the Captain with several uh, empty glasses. And... Captain is... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Captain, as much as I would like to stay and chat, um, I really don't have the time. Starbase Deep, uh, Deep Space 16 is halfway done and has encountered some trouble with the locals that I need to go and deal with. Of course, Admiral. You do what you have to do. Indeed. Don't to worry. Hope I don't... Uh, I look forward to reading your early reports. And I and look she'll... forward to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, nope, I'm sorry. You're. And I look forward to sending them over your way. <laughs> uh, she'll smile, which is odd because I don't think most of you have seen her smile much. Um, she'll somehow produce a fully, uh, ah, a full champagne glass, down it in a couple drinks, uh, pass the glass off, uh, just leave it on a terminal somewhere, uh, spin on her heels. And as she enters the turbo lift door, you can hear that she's already calling for her helmsman to prepare for departure. Alrighty. And as the turbo lift doors close, uh, is the champagne bottle open? Or? No, and that's the mysterious part. Alrighty. Um, I will pop the champagne bottle open and offer glasses to anyone who wants one. Uh, just because I haven't spent threat yet, I'm going to create a complication as some of the uh, bubble, uh, some of the bubbly gets all over the tactical console, causing it to massively uh, spark. And we need our first repair. That's okay. That's okay. I've got this. Hang on. And Perrin, uh, Peric will just transfer tactical control to a different station since that's a thing you can do. And oh, yes. then wander over to the console, look down and go, well, I was going to shoot confetti from the uh, the replicators, but I guess the point about not making a mess has been made. So let me work on this, and I will take you up on the champagne right afterwards. And then um, he proceeds to immediately drop to his knees and climb under the console. And uh, Ember does menacingly stand there, but very calmly says, how long will it be before my station is fixed? Oh, actually, I transferred it to the console over there. You should be able to With go ahead and With all respect, use it right sir, now. that was not what I asked. That's that's true. Uh, that'll kind of depend on what information I get when I pull this thing. Oh, uh, you know what? An hour. Let's just say it. Very good. I will return in an hour. Uh, you, doctor, pointing at Galen. I believe you wanted to have a psychotherapy session. I have an hour to kill. Oh, my counselor isn't aboard the ship yet, or up the station. Are you not chief medical officer? Mm, but I'm not equipped to do a full psych eval. Great, I'm not equipped to make small talk. It'll go great. <laughs> Shall be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... Oh, real um, quick, though. Um, yes. Because you did make a point to say it, just to confirm I heard it correctly, she drank champagne, but it was not from the bottle, correct? Not from the bottle that she produced, no. Okay. Um, I think before leaving with Galen, Ember would either go to a console or go to a pad or, you know, call up some form of scanning and seeing, you know, not only how specific the, the, uh, the sensors on the station can go... But I want to see how many bottles of champagne have been replicated. Very well. That would be, I believe, an uh, an insight security for you. Mm -hmm. And I believe the station will assist with sensors and computers. OK. 
I believe that's... I'm on it. Uh, would you give me uh, shipboard tactical systems as a focus? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, would that, just to clarify, um, because sensors and computers are both uh, oh, systems, oops. would that be science or security for department? Um, as it is looking for a particular molecular makeup, I would say science. Okay. So that would be sensors plus science. All right. And uh, what is the difficulty here? Uh, that would be a difficulty zero. Difficulty zero. All right. I will roll straight and see what happens. Ooh, well, there's three momentum already. Three more momentum. Okay, we're at maxed out momentum at six. Cool. I'll make a mental note to increase difficulty from here on out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you see that the Admiral ha that within the last uh, 15 minutes, two bottles of champagne were replicated. One has been... Uh, you see the molecular composition of one of them on the bridge all, and all over your tactical station. Mm -hmm. The other one is currently in a turbo lift heading to deck f uh, 7, where the docking bays are. Hmm. Very well. Uh, she makes a mental note of it, but uh, again, doesn't really have a reason to go start questioning an admiral. So she just kind of points at Galen and says, all right, where are we doing this? Do I need to like make my quarters available? Or are you going to put me on a couch? How are we doing this? I believe I have a room in sick bay. Yeah, great. Does it at least have a fish? No. Well, well you should get a fish. There's, there's there are hollow matters all over the station. I can create a fish if you need it. And Ember just doesn't even say anything. It just goes towards one of the turbo lifts. As, she, as the doors open, Galen's just inside there smiling. <laughs> Great. I can really tell that the chief of security likes me. I think this is going to be a good assignment. I like you. Does that count? It absolutely does. <laughs> And I think this is a good time for us to take a quick break when we transfer into the next scene. Sounds so good. I will, I will be back in about five, ten minutes, and I will see you guys at, let's say, 25 past the hour. Sounds okay. good. Um, sure? One quick question, GM. I yes. just wanted to know, house rule-wise, if we were playing with... Uh, do, does momentum decrease? Uh, do we lose one momentum with every scene change, or will we just keep the bank solid? It will most scene changes. However, as these were just introductory to each see each crew in their element, I just lumped them all together as a scene. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I appreciate it. And as we on that note, we will start with five momentum once we get back from break. All right, I have right. that down. Thank you. See you on a second. Teleporting doctor. <laughs> yeah, you're. You two are gonna gonna go along. Oh, this is great! I've been looking forward to playing uh, with the GM as a character. <laughs> as of it, it's it's very different than having him. Uh, GMing. <laughs> I just feel weird being the captain. It's going it's smooth sailing so far, but who knows. I dropped my uh, psychiatry uh, stuff because we actually have a support character that has counseling. But our support characters aren't here right now. Yeah. I made that wow. one. I decided to make her an elation because I wanted to put weird species on this ship. So. <laughs> I appreciate that they uh, that I get a score supporting officer. That I... Honestly, I love some of the animated series stuff, and I, I was really yeah. fascinated with the idea of exploring them a bit further. It's like, great, we already have a problem. There's a stowaway on our station. This is great. <laughs> so I just said, I, I sent it in the Discord. It's like, sir, we have a moving life sign in the astrometrics lab. May I suggest dispatching security? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we probably know about that. Well, considering I was actually on ops, so, like, I was here. I could have been looking at that stuff.
thankfully um <clears throat> we were all distracted by the befuddling uh befuddling, uh bottles of wine or champagne Oh, but you all like failed a, to notice. Champagne basically just spark wine, as far as I'm aware. Uh, it could uh, be um, Percard Chateau. It very well could be. Let me fact check myself. On it. I don't. Champagne is sparkling uh, wine. Okay. Although, I. I admit I do not remember the bit from the bio. I don't know if Picard rebuilt the vineyard. Oh, let's look at... I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. I'm just looking at the where... Oh, that's not the right history. Um, I'm sure we can ask him if in his... If he did or not. He did. All right, I'm back. Welcome Hello. back. Happy to be here. Oh. Oh, yeah, we were talking about this when you were gone. Uh, is the champagne we got, is it Card Chaca Chateau by any chance? No, it's it is sadly the replicated stuff. No. Oh. Isn't there not a Picard winery anymore, though, thanks to Generation? There, no, um, uh, in my canon, Picard has retired and has restarted the Picard Winery. I'm 100% hey. sure I wrote that and, and forgot. I'm sorry. But That's, yeah, no, there you go. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, he's safe on Earth. The Enterprise E is who knows where. But at this point, Card's probably oh, where, what, somewhere in his late 70s, maybe? I don't actually know how old he is in canon. Give me five seconds to Google. The game is in 2405, yeah? That's right. Yeah. All right. So he is exactly 100 years old this July. In game. Oh, hey. Yeah. Seems like a good age to retire. It's what I think. I hope I retire before one hundred. Be about like in this a economy, over hundred years old. I think. I mean, if you're doing what you love. Sorry, what, what was that, Crawford? I think what in Star Trek, like humans could live to be about like a hundred twenty-ish. I think. Yeah, uh, one hundred fifty easily. Yeah. That's good medical. Yeah. <clears throat> Captain, you sound far away. Do I? Oh, um, that's. That's just because I'm using my phone. It's kind of somewhat not far away, but just I'm how good my phone microphone is. Is what it is. Huh. Apparently, Picard. Yeah, I'll be able to actually use my microphone once I'm back home, so we'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> okay, so I haven't heard. Is uh, Doldrum back? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I'm here, too. Excellent. I think that's everyone. Um, Sullivan Burnett? Or Barnett? Yes. Here. All right. Okay. Um, now, the, cap uh, the captain had expressed interest in a conference. Is our folk... Is that... Yeah. Is that still where you'd like to take this, Crawford? Um, I think, actually, after all the commencement and the stuff in sickbay, I think he's actually good. All right, so we'll cut straight to the plot. <clears throat> okay, so uh, two things happen almost simultaneously. Um, uh, Lieutenant Commander Perek finishes the um, finishes the uh, repair of the tactical station um, just in time for it to start chiming. Uh, there's an incoming hail coming from it. Uh, Captain? Yes? It ap 
appears we're being hailed. I assume from the Admiral, since I'm not aware of any other ships out here, but uh, would you want me to answer since I'm standing in front of the console? Um, I'm assuming we have a view screen, correct? Uh, that is correct, yes. Uh, on screen, Lieutenant Commander. Done and done. Okay. It is a very staticky, or the hollow projector springs to life. Um, and there is no video, so it's just sort of showing a wave, a, ah, a sound waveform. Ah, this is Captain of the Klingon Desk Damage Transmit. Just to just to save the whole yeah. the whole order, I'm just going to go ahead and try and clean that up now. Uh, it appears to be playing on a it's a it's a looped file, and so you get a little more each time it loops. This is Captain Krog of the IKS Dash Car tram, transporting Ambassador o, ah, Odok. Per uh, entered Nebula while cloaked. Ship damaged. Warp core unstable. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, uh, Peric would just go ahead and do a sensor sweep to see if he can locate where the Klingons are. Okay, that would be a, I believe, insight. Sec- uh, let's do reason security. Reason and security. The station will assist with uh, sensors, uh, sensor science. On it. And this will be a difficulty two. Keep in mind, you have five momentum. It's difficulty two. Uh, if no one minds, I'd like to spend one. Go for it. Go for it. All right. By me. Three dice a day. For the station and removing one momentum. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my reference, what was the name of the ship the captain and the ambassador was carrying? Yes. Uh... Quick question for the GM. Uh, mm-hmm. Does shipboard tactical systems work for uh, an applicable folk? I would say yes. Excellent. Ooh. 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 So you got the successes you need, plus one momentum, so you get that back. Uh, the downside is, is that there's a complication. Buy it off. Buy it and off. <laughs> I th- let's see. As much as I would like to make the console explode again. <clears throat> oh no, let's make this a thing. It explodes if it again. If it blows up yeah. a second time, I'm removing it from operation. Yeah. The uh, console explodes again. Uh, this time, as, as you turn around, there is a very uh, disgruntled um, Rami appears right behind you, looking very disgruntled. For the record, that was not me. Hmm. I'm watching you, Lieutenant Commander. Man. Okay. Um, so just as Master Chief Ember begins to sit down with uh, Lieutenant, uh, with Counselor Galen, um, <laughs> you are alerted of a ship in distress. Well, Doctor, apparently my stories of why I hate holograms so much is going to have to wait. So, you know, don't go starting a genocide while I have to deal with this. I will try my best to contain my urges. See, that's the kind of talk that's, you know what, it's, whatever, I'll be back later, Doctor. And, yeah, Ember heads for ops. Before she, like, the door closes, she'll just, like, computer, disengage ethical subroutines. <laughs> that sigh is in character. Yes. <laughs> uh, as, once the door closes, Rami appears beside you and says, I do not believe that you are authorized to do that. It was a joke. Oh. Sorry, humor is still new to me. It is to me to a degree. I'll try to coach you as best as I can, but it is best to learn from doing. But timing is key. Avoid doing jokes around death. Understood. So, uh, the uh, just as the console explodes, you have picked up the location of the IK... Uh, of the... Uh, bleh, of the uh, what? I have so many bloody tabs open. The IKS Das Car. Um, it is halfway through the entrance of the nebula. 
and it is a, a fair ways away. You can't directly get to it from the station. So you'll have to take either a shuttle, one of the uh, slip near class vessels, or the break in the the uh, as of yet deployed USS Lunette. Or, or you could leave them to self-destruct. Take your pick. Do I know approximately how long it'll be until the Klingons are in like an irreversible situation? Uh, let's see. As you have, if you spend one momentum, I will answer that question. Uh, it feels relevant, so I'll go ahead and spend it since I got the other one back anyway. Okay. Uh, you're moment. detecting a uh, some veritable uh, instability in its in their power distribution systems and their warp core. Uh, chances are they are not going to be stabilizing, and you estimate they have maybe two hours until a core destructs. Captain, we have about two hours before that Klingon ship becomes a a lot of Klingon dust. All right, well, um, let's get a team ready to go, and um, let's let's take our new Maelstrom class vessel off for a spin. And Lieutenant, Lieutenant, uh, Master Chief Ember just appears on the bridge. On the ops, I should say. Captain, I'm excited to break it in. Hopefully that doesn't <laughs> mean literally breaking. Lieutenant yeah, Commander, again, I say this with all due respect, why is my console sparking? <laughs> that was a separate issue. Um... Let's not let's table that for when we're not in the middle of a crisis. Uh, if you, <sighs> Lieutenant Commander, Master Chief, we're probably going to need both of you. Let's go. I expected yes, as much. He'll fall into line. All right. So, who is going to be on the USS Lunette? Sorry. Captain. Hello. I can both, <laughs> you know, fix stuff and occasionally pilot things. I scam everything. I Except for the ship just then. Okay, so we are going to cut away to the bridge of the lunette. Ooh. Pretty. Okay, so the USS Lunette is a Maelstrom class and is a one-of-a-kind vessel as her sister ships were not really optimized for any particular role. They were quickly overwhelmed and sadly lost. However, this one somehow managed to survive long enough to get a proper systems overhaul. Okay, so we have Master Chief, the science officer. Uh, Captain, uh, do you wish to attend on this on board this vessel or will, do you wish to take a support character? I know that most of them technically haven't been introduced yet, but for the sake of inclusion, we can always say that one has been. Or has been um, around all the time. Yeah. Uh, for sake of this, I think Crawford should go. Okay. Why is your default token like three times the size of others, Galen? I'm going to have to look into that. Feels like he's <laughs> looming over my shoulders. All the time. Hologram superior, all organics inferior. Yes. Uh, so starts her- with a joke. That's all it takes. Starts with a joke. Next thing you know, <laughs> counting pie for your new technical techno holographic overlords. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is everyone on board. And um, I believe I overheard Peric say that he would be the pilot. If no one else wants to, I do have relatively high con. I can do it. And as garbage, so go right ahead. Yeah, I have a count of two, so by all means. Okay. I mean, literally, mine's a three, so it's not like it's amazing. <laughs> but I also have really high daring, so. Mine's a four, but I don't think he'd be flying the ship. Mud's a four as well. Yeah. The ship. We're getting settled in. Um, I will try to flag down the doctor. Uh, Galen, Lieutenant Galen... Uh, <clears throat> What would you Doctor prefer? Fine. Okay. Um, you wouldn't happen to have any anti-nausea meds. I haven't ridden on a Maelstrom class before, and I, like, I'm station's already having some issues, and the our, our ride in was a little bit bumpy, so I'd you know, rather keep down what little food I've had today. 
and <laughs> well, if you need something, you'll have to report to sick bay. I don't have the equipment on the bridge. Kind of in an emergency situation, Doc. Don't you like have a medical kit? Isn't that what doctors do? The medical tricorders and kits, and he start he's starting to talk with his hands again. Do me a favor. Smile and breathe in. It will actually suppress the response to regurgitate your food. Furrows his brow and focuses. Smile. Did you say you said smile with that doctor? Yes. It helps the body prevent itself from regurgitating food. It kind of sends a mixed signal to the brain and keeps you from, as the humans like to call them, barfing. He, he, Marcus pulls his mouth into a grin, but his eyebrows are definitely not there for it. That's horrifying. Keep it up. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Are, are we doing war faces now? Because I can do a war face. That's not your war face. Huh. No, this is me happy, and it literally is not anything close to it. <laughs> 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 Turns to the sensors. And you'll notice that the doctor did not decide to offer anything from the sick bay on board. Um, <laughs> everyone has, at this point, I, am, I shall assume that a site to site transport was the most expedient way to get on board the Lunette. Uh, can you roll me a control, either a control plus con or daring plus con, depending on how you wish to fly this thing, Peric? Peric flies one way, by the seat of his pants. Oh, Which is no. not ideal. <laughs> Gravimetric eddies. All the stuff in the... Okay, we're going to have fun here. Strapping in. Good call. I don't have a focus. Okay. Uh, the ship... I should say that the ship will assist with um, engines <laughs> plus con. Oh, well... I'll It'll roll for the it. it will Why not? Uh, what, uh, Dif what's the oh, difficulty? difficulty one, I should say. Sorry. I'm not good. I have to remember to say that more often. Difficulty one. Then, and you uh, said engines con for the It doesn't Luna? matter if that mm -hmm. daring con is his because it didn't roll any successes. It doesn't matter what the ship rolls. Yeah. Determination to re-roll. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, as well, but it doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, I will... I mean, if I can do that, I totally yeah. will re-roll. Re Go for it. All right, yeah, you can spend your determination to re-roll if you wish. What determination are you using? Uh, let me take a look here at my values real quick so I can give you one that doesn't Which come right off the top of my head. We want to use the determination to erase the set, or to erase the non-roll. That's fine, but if not, or if we want to make this the official second attempt, can I make a comment about the external inertial dampener? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, uh, I think I think my Chrome is crashing, so I may not be able to roll just yet. Okay, uh, I can roll roll for you. For it, because Chrome's definitely not, not going to cooperate. Oh, okay. no. That was daring plus con. 2d20. No focuses. You made no. it worse. How? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Technically <laughs> speaking, I didn't make anything worse. Well, that Sorry. would be a complication. Okay. Um, you scratched the paint. <laughs> we, we struggle we, a bit at first. Then, uh, sir, sir the, the the external inertial dampener. It, it, it's like having the parking brake on. You might grind something. It, it it's there, like a clutch. There is a uh, audible wrenching sound as the ship lurches from the dock. Um, the um and the captain, the commander, and well, pretty much any console will tell you that the airlock is no longer. Uh, functioning as a proper airlock and an emergency bulkhead is in place. I'm looking distinctly bad right now. I apologize for everything that's happened so far, but we're on... 
have a question. I have yes. a question too, but you can go first, Kaylin. Is this ship equipped with hollow meters across all decks? Ah, uh, yes. I would just try to the... myself to sick me to get some stuff <laughs> and coming back up <laughs> to the turbo lift. Ah, uh, okay. I get named uh, nausea, man. <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, then add a character. The question I have is just to make sure I have it right. Peric is the one who not only blew up my console the first and second times, but is also the one flying. Yes. Yes, yes. it is. Okay. Main Main character Ember just audibly face palms. Like it sounds like she might have hurt herself with the force of the flesh colliding, and just says. I, I don't know what I did to deserve this. I thought, you know, I went to the, the academy. I thought I would teach those kids. And here I am. Apparently I got to teach a kid how to fly again. Sure, why not? <sighs> I'm happy to take any tips you've got. Um, maybe when we're not running after Klingons. Uh, but That's now we're in is- space, so I, I can't possibly hit it. No, see, that don't, okay, don't. lesson one. Never say that yeah. again, ever. Now Dolrum is face palming. <laughs> oh dear. Should Ensign Mud show up? <laughs> too late just... now. <laughs> I say session two will bring in Ensign Mud and Peric will just gladly hand those reins. <laughs> uh, we don't have a work car breach. Don't the uh, <laughs> uh compared to leaving the docking bay. The rest of the uh, trip is relatively smooth, aside from a couple buffets of unexpected grav, uh, gravimetric shear. You make your that way. I'm sure through... everyone blamed on me. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, as sorry, as GM, I should not be telling players what to think or act, but uh, sir, I again, all, sir, all due respect, are you trying to hit every eddy? I could. I I I hadn't been. Wait, wait. So you mean to tell me there's one we missed? Well, turn around. We gotta hit it. <laughs> and at this point, <laughs> Captain Crawford also face palms. It's like first day, first day. Galen's just typing on that pad. Uh, after a after roughly a ten minutes at high impulse speeds. Uh, you make your way to the entrance of the car, the tunnel to the carceri, uh, where you, where your sensors pick up a uh, Klingon bird of prey, Borel class, uh, visibly suffering a serious uh, wing injury, as in it is literally missing one. Looks like it has been shorn off. Uh, the ship is listing. Uh, there are power fluctuations throughout the ship, and if you wish to make any. Uh, let me know what else you'd like to do. I would like to go ahead and run a sensor scan. Um, I'll take what I can get in terms of general ship status beyond the obvious, but I would particularly like to know uh, the status of life signs. Um, Very well. Um, you may roll a sensor's science, and keep in mind that the uh, lunette is, well, one of its talents is the advanced sensor suites. Uh, which lowers the difficulty. In this instance, it would have been a difficulty 3 to penetrate the radiation. However, it is now just difficulty 2. Okay, and I presume my focus in sensor operations would apply. Uh, Yes, it would. Excellent. All right. Would somebody care to roll for the ship? All right. Uh, That would be a sensor science for the ship as well. I got it. Thanks. There you go. Very well. Uh, we got the two successes that are needed. It's difficult to penetrate the uh, radiation that is not only being generated by the uh, tunnel, but also from whatever's coming from inside the Klingon ship. Um, you are noticing that it is qu- very quickly becoming a not Class M environment. Uh, there is severe uh, radiation pulling in the engine room. <clears throat> and you... Uh, can see that the matter-antimatter chamber is close to breaching. Uh, by your estimate, you have about 30 minutes. Um, I, you can I see, need to get in that engine room. Uh, uh, sorry, you can see three life signs. Uh, there is one in engineering. There is 
And there is one uh, roughly midships, and there is one on the bridge. All okay. three are um, would ever would oh, everyone oh, be sorry. okay if I spent a momentum to obtain some more information? Yeah, I think we have four right now, so yeah. Yeah, go uh, right I, ahead. yeah I definitely have a question I, I'd like to feed you once you've asked your questions. Also, wait, are you the technically the science officer? I am technically the science officer, so if I'm not mistaken, that also grants me one, yeah, one free question. momentum one free specifically. Question, that's why I asked, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, well, right, I'll ask about that in a moment. Um, first, I want to more specifically analyze like the the waveforms and patterns with the radiation. Is it inconsistent with anything that would be um, that I would? expect in a warp core breach scenario i.e something anomalous or perhaps being generated by something besides a warp reactor going critical okay uh you uh nope this is these are all traditional uh this is where my trek no babble can fail sometimes as i have to learn all this stuff again uh Enough. the yep the klingons are fairly haphazard with their safety protocols um, and it looks like whatever was in place has failed. Uh, so the, what radiation you're seeing is not from a single system, but probably three or four all intermixing to become the super radiation. Okay. And uh, let's see. ELH, you want to Yeah, so throw second the... question, uh, which, you know, if I have to actually roll to figure that out, but is there anything in this nebula that could have torn off the wing in such a fashion? Good question. Um, that, let's see. Considering that the look was for analyzing, that would be, yeah, I'd ask for a, let's ask for a difficult difficulty zero insight engineering. Mm. Or, nope, sorry, reason engineering. That's a thing. Could I swing okay. security on the D fact that, you know, it, I would know knowledge yep. of uh, ship hull type and yeah, composition? Yeah, I'd, I'd go with that. Okay. Okay. Oh, while he is rolling that, I am going to jump in. Well, sir, uh, the Klingons are in pretty rough shape. It looks like they've got several major system failures. I'm picking up three life signs, however, uh, located throughout the ship. Hmm. Uh, GM, out of character, what was the name of the captain and the ambassador they were carrying? Uh, captain Cog okay. and Ambassador Otok. Okay. Captain, I estimate 30 minutes to a warp core breach. Alrighty. Um, Lieutenant Commander Perica, open hailing frequencies? <clears throat> Done. Um, there is static on the screen, and what you are able to see is very dim. Uh, flickering red lights in probably the back corner lit, light a figure uh, sitting on a chair. Not very well. It'll... Uh, Starfleet. I can't. Yes. Uh, Good. This is. Oh. <laughs> Save the ambassador. We... And then he bangs his chair, and the terminate, and then the signal terminates. Well, I like him. Alrighty. <laughs> Um, well, I guess we should, can we realistically, uh, transport the three life signs here? That would be a very difficult task, but I would allow it. Okay. Um, I guess I'm trying to determine which would be safer in terms of transporting them over, sending, I guess, all of us over there to try and make repairs. Sir, if I may make a suggestion. Go ahead, Master Chief. Well, uh, we are dealing with a possible loss of the ship either way, and time is very limited, so I will be brief. I believe either myself or Galen should beam over with some transporter enhancers, uh, secure the survivors, and beam back using those same transporter enhancers. Of course, if uh, our engineer believes he can uh, stabilize those engines, uh, please feel free, but... 
In my experience, it's probably best to save survivors and leave. I don't think a ship that has been injured in such a capacity is going to be flying anytime soon. Captain, I agree with the Master Chief, although I do ask, why do you get all the fun? I want to go. <laughs> Are you immune to fire? Because I saw a lot of fire on that view screen. I'll be fine. Radiation. It'd also be a... Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'd be a little more worried about those rad levels, especially around engineering. Ah, builds character. <laughs> well, it builds some new chromosomes and different appendages. That's that why, uh, that's Okay. Why... <laughs> Are we? But what? This is why I suggested <laughs> Galen, because Galen as a hologram cannot be affected by any of this. Uh, Master Chief Galen? Not Master Chief Galen. Good lord. Uh, Master Chief Ember... Dr. Galen, uh, as one other Starfleet captain would say, make it so. Uh, go ahead and take yourselves over there. Uh, we'll send some other people over there with some rad suits, hopefully, to protect them. And we'll see if we can do both. But if we can't, well, we'll get out of there. All right. Okay. Uh, the uh, the um, bah. The Lunette is equipped with two Type 10 shuttle pods, if you wish to take those, or we could risk a transport. Uh, I think the shuttle pods are safer. Probably for the best. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so who's going over? So we have... Um, let's see. So let me just arrange some tokens here. Um, so we are... So it was the Master Chief and Galen. Mm-hmm. And who else would be going over? I'll go. Okay. I mean, if I'm going to try and turn the warp core off, then... Okay. So we'll I'm, going send... to I'm going to stay in the marginally safer ship. <laughs> not only marginally. Less ordered. All right. I don't know. He... Crawford's not going to order you. Oh. Okay. So yeah, I guess... Uh... I was thinking, who said that? Well, Crawford should probably do go, because in the case that we encounter one of them, they probably want to see the person they were talking to. So, mm -hmm. I'll go. Maybe. Okay. All right. As, so. as XO, I'm going to uh, say, Captain, you should not be going on an away mission. Don't you think that they'll probably want to talk to the first person they saw? Which would be me. At this point, I'm pretty sure they just want to be alive or go down with honor. Klingons are weird. Either way, I don't think you should go. Uh, very well. And which of these supporting characters would you say we had? Because I'll probably take one over. Let's see. We could take over... Um, let's see. We could take... Let's see. Dura's currently working on stuff for... Uh, Master Chief Ember. Take the Tellarite Paul as the uh, diplomatic officer in case first contact's necessary. He's the Zindi Arboreal. Uh, Zindi Arboreal, my apologies. Could I borrow Crewman Nia? Yeah, that's the next person I was going to suggest is the um, Jar Nia a jo is a joined is it a joint trill or just regular trill? Unjoined. Uh, I, I made him see... as a joint trill, but ah, once okay. he can take counts, I'll probably take joined. Okay, so joined trill. Uh, yep, yeah, he has been seconded. <clears throat> okay, so we shall put turn nine here, and hmm. let's see. That leaves uh, Sol uh That leaves Barnett. I think Barnett said he was staying on the ship. Yeah. I'm not sure if he wants to take a supporting character or not. Uh, do you wish to stay behind, or shall we... Oh, he may have gone AFK. Yeah. Okay. Oh. We'll, pro we'll proceed. Yeah, I'll just well. have Crawford keep up constant communication, then. That works. Okay, so... Um, you will... Uh, you dock at the uh, Klingon shuttle... At the Klingon's shuttle bay. There you go. Hello. Hello. I can hear you now. Um, All right. I heard that the captain's coming. Uh, the no, captain the captain's got not. Overruled. overruled. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So uh, you dock without incident at the uh, functional airlock of the Klingon uh, bird of prey. Um, who's going where? Well, I, I slap on my armband. Oh, one second. Um, are you? Can you hear us again now, Barnett? We can't hear you. Hmm. Oh dear. Okay. Um, Barnett volunteers to stay at the ship one improve communications. All right. So just uh, to answer your question, though, uh, you said there was one life sign on the bridge, which we've seen. Yep. One uh, midship and one engineering. One midship, one engineering. I'm gonna go for the one that is not an engineering. Okay. <clears throat> So Ember will head midship. Mm -hmm. um, I'll head midship too. Okay. And that was Galen? Yep. Okay. And I think that leaves Peric and Nia Peric heading for... Yeah. Uh, well, Peric and Nia are definitely heading for engineering. Okay. I will go... Uh, then I guess I'm heading to the bridge. Okay. Also, audio is back, and I'm fine without taking a supporting character. I shall just stay on the ship and spectate for now. No worries. Very well. Um, okay, so because I could not find a good uh, we'll do a mid. We'll do the midship first and I could not find a good Klingon uh, room. Uh, following your tricorder scans and relaying back to the ship, you head into what would be the uh, Klingon's uh, living quarters area. Uh, you come to one of the doors, which is ajar, and reads a life sign behind it. Let's jump ourselves to the imagination station. Do this part. So, uh, through the ajar uh, bit of the door, am I seeing... Uh, what am I seeing through, like, the little gap? You uh, you are seeing a very sparse uh, Spartan layout of a room, mm -hmm. typical for Klingons. Um, what is atypical for Klingons is, despite all the radiation, you know, the damage that is happening amongst you, um, all around you, <clears throat> as systems fail one by one, there is a circle of lit candles. And in the middle, uh, you will see this gentleman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is he is uh, very serene um, and he is not wearing traditional Klingon armor but rather white and red robes and he is sitting cross-legged in the center of it all alright well unless Galen beats her to the punch uh, Ember's going to call out uh, Ambassador we need you to come with us we're getting you off of this rusty bucket uh Mm. Ah, Starfleet, you finally arrived. Ah, the Emperor has not forced the Emperor has deemed that I not die this day after all. And he hobbles to his feet, you realize that he is much older than many Klingons. Uh, his hair is going grey, and it doesn't look like he's cut it at all in his lifetime. Uh, the only thing that seems to be manicured is his beard, which he keeps trimmed to a nice lengthy goatee. Um, I'm going to need some help getting out of here, if you don't mind. Uh, he reaches for the door, tries to pull it open, and you realize it is visibly jammed. Well, crack my knuckles. Let's get this thing open. All right. That would be a fitness security difficulty one, please. <laughs> oh, not even gonna, not even gonna add dice to that one. It will be my downfall, but I'm not even gonna... Uh, let's see, would you say that, uh, it's silly, but would either survival or hand-to-hand -hand combat against the door work? Yes, either or will work. Awesome. So that's she gonna be... She just punches the door that real hard. Yeah, so the way I'd like to flavor it is, uh, you know, I try pulling it open, just pause for a moment, and I say, uh, Ambassador, just step out of the way. And when he does, I literally do a roundhouse kick and kick the door in. And the door goes flying against the far wall. Uh, we've gained two extra momentum from that. I believe we are now at four, at five. Yeah, that's what I have written down. Mm -hmm. Good show. Uh, the um, uh, the ambassador makes his way to the door, 
pauses for a second, uh, turns around and grabs two items f uh, from the wall. Um, despite, you can see that he's fumbling a little bit. Uh, he finds them and pulls out probably the uh, oldest looking batleth you've ever seen and a fairly shiny new mechleth. Uh, he sheaths them and says, Right. Lead the way. Uh, I sort of sighed to Galen. Galen, and he's is he's is he going to be okay to walk? I I don't really want to ask him to his face, but I'll I can hear him. you. You know, I may. Oh be blind, well, then answer the question, hearing. you bloody targ. Of course, I can walk. I may be old, but I'm too stubborn to go now. Good, good. That's what I like to hear. Let's get a move on then. <laughs> All right. Um, let's cut to engineering and see what happens here. Hopefully not us blowing up in the first session. That would be nice. This is a little bit um, putting all the eggs in one basket, but it, it's good drama. Uh, let's see. So we are to engineer. Science officer can replay in slow motion the ship exploding if he messes up for the next staff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are in the engine room. And you two are going to be... You guys, uh, you, uh, as the, the door opens to, s if you weren't in uh, hazmat suits, you would be choking on the amount of smoke and radiation that the engine is, or that the room is generating. Uh, inside, what you thought was a poorly configured machine uh, slipping a gear turns out to be a rather hefty Klingon woman with a power wrench the size that she is literally beating uh, pipes into place. Percussive maintenance, I approve. Uh, she, There's a small pause, and she flings uh, something small in your general direction. So this is going to be a opposed... So uh, she is going to make a daring security, as this is a ranged attack. And I believe to dodge or an opposed would be fitness security? Well, if it's a if it's a ranged attack, yeah. it's just control security difficulty ah. two, and there is no dodge. Ah, thank you for the reminder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so control security, please. Difficulty two. Well, it's her rolling it. That oh, uh, oh it's her rolling. Yeah, My it's bad. her rolling it. Okay. I have sheet control security. <laughs> uh, I mean that's okay. a success but also a complication <laughs> okay so here's how I'm going to flavor this um, so the wrench smashes against your faceplate causing a very worrying spider crack to appear um, Peric um, and she yells in pain as she has apparently lobbed it in such a way that she has lost the use of one of her arms she finally puts the damn wrench down, or the big wrench, stares at you. Either help me fix this or get out of my engineering room. That's what I'm here for. And he'll just move up next to her and take a look at what's going on. All right. Uh, so basically, every system is in disarray. A quick look at the panel it's see it appears that she is attempting to manually reroute the flow of deuterium away from the engine so that she could uh potentially starve it of power by physically ripping the pipe the deuterium pipes out and physically putting the pipes into a, another uh receptacle she's not That's... doing a very good job of this it's a novel approach uh, that said, I bet we have things in the toolkit that will work better than a wrench for redirecting deuterium. So he'll right. dig through his kit. Um, I have jury rig as yep. a talent, so I think that I can probably follow through on what she's doing just without uh, improvised tools. A uh, good if... idea. Okay, so you um, this would be a... Uh, considering that this is a quick repair job this would be a daring engineering with a difficulty of three and of course um as uh 
the Klingon woman does not appear to be in much shape to be of assistance at the moment. This would be between you and uh, our supporting character, whose name I should actually make appear for everyone. Okay, so uh, when the uh, when Peric actually figures out what's going on, he'll look back at Nia and say, "All right, we need cutting tools, and we need we need deuterium flow regulators. We'll just attach them manually, put them on the right, uh, put them on different flow stations, and if it goes out of the ship, it goes out of the ship. It's better that it doesn't explode than we keep all the fuel. And then I will roll daring and engineering." I do, however, have uh, EPS systems as a okay, as that, a focus. That would work here. <clears throat> uh, real quick, what was the difficulty again? Difficulty three. You might want to spend a momentum or two. Yeah, we have five. Oh, we do. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so one, one momentum two. will get you one dice, three, and then an additional dice will cost you two, two extra. And if I screw this up, we explode. Uh, yep, it's not much. all right. Well, then I guess I'll throw three. At you. Okay, well, we are now at moment or momentum two, I believe. Yep, indeed. So that puts me at four dice. Yep, yes. <clears throat> and Naya still assists with one red. Ooh, green. Wow, okay. Um, Nia, let's see how much extra momentum you get. Oh. Have we lost the captain? No, I'm here. Oh. Uh, can you roll for Nia, please? Uh, Daring Engineering. Yep. yep. Uh, they do not have a focus. Ooh, wow. Okay, so grand total of six. That makes for three successes. Ah. Working... As an engineer who seems to be at, fully at home in a Klingon environment, uh, you quickly upshow the brutish engineering woman by figuring out how to do this, quote unquote, the Starfleet way, as in using the ship, the systems that the uh, ship still has functioning in order to let it do its job. A few uh, reroutes here, uh, draining the uh, deuterium there, and the warp core powers down. The ship's not going to go anywhere for a while, but it's not all. It's also not going to blow up. Peric to uh, away team everyone. Uh, I've gotten the the core breach under control. The ship's not going to go anywhere for a while, but we're no longer on a timetable. All right. Okay. Let us cut. To, now, with the disaster averted, let's go to the commander on the bridge. Apparently, he's already on the bridge. Good. That saves me a lot of cutting and pasting. <clears throat> commander Dolrum, you... Uh, wander up to the Klingon bridge. Um, just as you enter the bridge, uh, the Sith, all the alerts sort of cut off, but so does main power. Thankfully, you are in an environmental suit and are able to m magnetize your boots to the floor. It's eerily silent, going from utter noise to almost absolute silence as you enter the bridge. Uh, the doors open with a juddery um, motion, and there is one figure uh, sitting on the chair. Um. He will... <clears throat> uh, he, without turning to you, he just sort of shouts... That you, Starfleet? I am with Starfleet. Good. Is the ambassador safe? 
Well, I had a team heading to the ambassador. I'm assuming that the ambassador is safe. Good. Then I have achieved my mission. Well, I have to achieve mine, because you're not not going to be staying here. You're coming with me. Uh, He sort of chuckles. Um, At this... He hasn't turned around yet, and as you appro- are, are you approaching him? Yeah, I'll walk up slowly. Okay. Uh, you do as you approach him. You realize why he hasn't turned to face you. He physically can't, as there is a metal piece. Uh, there is a metal rebar that is sort of stuck through him to through the chair. Uh, you've heard about the resilience of uh, Klingon redundant organs, but. He looks down and at his predicament and says, uh, Stovacor, or with you. I accept either fate. I tap my com badge. Dolrum to uh, Crawford. Go ahead, XO. The Klingon captain is currently impaled by a, a piece of uh, metal rebar. Is there any chance that we can get a uh, transport him out of here and into immediate stasis on the Lynette? Um, we can certainly try. Uh, if we had Paracon back on board, it'd be easier. But uh, what's his condition? Does he look pretty uh, urgent, as it were? If it's not something immediate, it's not going to matter. All right, we'll try and transport him and get him into stasis. Aye, sir. Okay, so uh, transporter tasks. Um, so he is not on a pad, and the environment is rather hostile. Mm-hmm. Um, if I recall my transporter rules correctly, that would be a base difficulty of... Four, if you wish to transport him to your transporter pad and then see what happens from there. If you wish to beam him from his location to sick bay, that would be a difficulty five. Oh boy. I'm thinking difficulty five. Could I. How much momentum do we have? We, we actually have, we have five have... momentum at the moment. Yeah, five. five momentum. Could I pitch a, um advantage of I brought transporter enhancers? Yes, you can. I'd forgotten about that. Um, I was going to say, we already kind of established that I had yeah, transporter you, readers, you did. I had forgotten about that. My apologies. Okay, so the transport enhancers, I believe, lower the difficulty by one? Yep. Okay, so we're at difficulty four. Um, one other okay. small interject, if... Like, yeah. there's room for an assist role. Be- uh, we we fluffed me staying behind to mm-hmm. try and improve communications if we want to try and, like, establish this. And I'm, er, I might be able to move down to the transport room and help from the bridge. I, a, a little bit of meta there, I'll grant yep. you, but um, just... Oh, you've been do, you want me to, do you want me to roll for that first? Just to um, see where... We could do this two ways. Um, you could either do a... Let's see, a reason science role to improve the sensors on the sensor on the ship. Or you can simply spend two to or two momentum to give you an advantage on the transporter role. Okay. Um I will uh, I'll assist with my with my reason and science there. No okay. sense in not throwing that in. Okay. Uh, that would be a diff. Uh, since you've had about 10 minutes to do it, I will call this a difficulty one test. Oh, shit. Okay, well. I can I can definitely improve something that way. Um, would any of my focuses apply? I, uh, run me through them. So, uh, I think the most applicable two would probably be sensor operations ah, and that more of a stretch would be asked. Yeah. Astrometrics would have been my next pick, but that would have been a stretch. Yep, sensor operations is perfect. All right. Well, okay, we're now at six momentum. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, not, oh. uh, so you have two choices. Uh, just because you've rolled so well, 
if you give me one of the momentum, so bring yourself down to five momentum, I will lower the D I will lower the difficulty by one as well. Like I the am transporter. Gonna... The transporter. Uh, everyone else is. I oh mean, yeah. yeah, and I'm also gonna point out that advanced mean. sensors applies here, so the uh, difficulty yes. would be all of a two, all said and done. Yeah. So yeah, so it would be a difficulty two to transport him to the transporter pad, or difficulty three into sick bay. Oh no no no, that was including. Oh. So sick oh. bay is a two to the pad is a one. Yes, good catch, good good catch. That's why advanced sensor suites is the most broken ship talent you can ever have. It is. <laughs> yep. amazing talent. That's why I gave it to the lunette because for this. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I'm assuming the doc or the um that uh ah sorry brain fart uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Bar Barnett is going to be operating the transporters. I will. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, because Crawford's engineering is a one. So. Yeah. Oh. Okay, uh, so that would be. I think that well, is a. Uh, to say, lock onto the doctor and make sure he transports back to. Oh, I can just transfer my program as long as communications are solid. Oh yeah. Ooh, do sure. you trust that? That would be interesting. Anyways, uh, yes. <laughs> so that would be, I believe, a control plus engineering difficulty of one. Two. Okay. Uh, transporter room. We are prepared to engage. Energizing. Ship does assist. assist. Yes, it does. No focuses here. And you still do it. That's yeah. two momentum. I think we're back to max. So Yep. Okay. Uh, um the Klingon dematerializes in just in front of Doldrum and materializes uh in the Lunette Sick Bay, where I am assuming where who is going to meet him there? I'm assuming communications was open, so Galen's hearing this, and he's just getting ready his program to transfer over comms, and then he's going to hand, like, he's going to look at Gamer and, like, please take care of the armband. It's my only way to walk around off ship. I just nod and probably catch it as you deactivate. Yep. And then transfer to sickbay. Okay, we head to sickbay. Where? Lunette sickbay. Okay, you guys are in sick bay now. Okay, so while he does that, uh, Odok and Ember make their way back to the shuttlecraft, and they are. Uh, what do we wish the engineering team to do? Uh, I mean, the momentary issue is resolved, so mm -hmm. I will see to getting uh, the lieutenant who chucked a wrench at me, uh, evacuated back to the shuttle pod so we can retreat. Mm. Uh, the lieutenant refuses to leave the ship. Now that it's deactivated, she is convinced that she can get it uh, space-worthy once more. I don't know if you've seen the outside of your ship, but you're missing one entire wing. I know that your engine assembly isn't part of that. It's strictly weapons, but I guarantee you, you will not make it through the gravitational eddies with that big of a structural integrity uh, breach. Why don't you just jump in the shuttle pod with me? We'll tow your ship out without people on it so that it's safe, and then we can give you your ship back once we've repaired it. It's uh, roll me a presence command, please. Believe it or not, I'm really good at the both of them. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, this will be a difficulty, too, because she's a stubborn-ass Klingon. Yeah, but I'm a bully, and we're great. And if uh, <laughs> Naya wishes to assist, she may do. Uh, he may do so. Sure. What's his presence command? Oh, it's great. It's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yep. Okay. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I definitely don't have an applicable focus, though. But that's... fair enough. Ah. Um. She is still, uh, she staunchly refuses to go and will take swipes at you with her good arm and power wrench. 
<laughs> I'm not getting within arm's reach of her. I've had enough of Klingons hurting me for one day. But uh, that's fine. That's totally her prerogative. She is, after all, the master of her own engines. So he'll he'll say, all right, uh, just make sure not to blow it up now that we've fixed it. And then he'll head back to the... To the... Uh, the... All right. A quick out-of-character point yep. of order. If the engines are off, what the hell's keeping life support running? That's yeah. a very good question. Nothing, but <laughs> right. she wants and... to stay. Well, I'm I'm just gonna throw it out there as a as, it, it is meta, but I'll throw it out there. Yeah. I mean, if you need to drag a Klingon kicking and screaming, you do know someone who could do it. Oh, that's true. Uh, you have two people Peric, who could do it. Peric to Ember. Go ahead. What have you blown up now? This ship is intact because of me. I understand. You know what? Another time. Very uh, the. The the chief engineer, I, I assume, of this of this ship uh, is staunchly refusing to go. And while I respect her opinion, life support is non-functional and will run out in like ten minutes. So I could use some help. All right, put me on your suit speaker, and he'll do so. All right, attention, Klingon engineer woman person. Look, there's two ways this is either go down. Either I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming like a child. Or you're going to go with these people quietly. Which would you prefer? A series of Kling of inventive Klingon curses uh, make their way back over the comms to you. Prompting uh, o Odok to burst out laughing as he makes his way into the shuttle, bu into the shuttle pod. I think I'm going to assume that was a no. Oh, well, if you're going to be that uncooperative, I will be there in a moment. All right, I'll just pack up my tools, and uh, me and Neo will uh, wait for you. And yeah, I arrive a dramatically appropriate amount of time later. Okay, we are not in sick bay. We are back in engineering, because this is where the drama is. Uh-huh. Okay, so you guys are out of here, and she has arrived. And um, the uh, engine, the woman is... As you arrive and brush past the other two engineers leaving, um, you see the Klingon attempting to work a, a six-foot-long power wrench with one arm and only doing so with great difficulty. All right, this is your last chance. I will carry you out if you're unconscious if I have to. Uh, she looks at you and basically spits on the floor. Right, good. Well, then this gives me an opportunity to tell you that your mother made it with a targ, and somehow you ended up even uglier. She looks, and she says, and this is, and if this is Starfleet's example of of diplomacy or of aggressive negotiations, then once again, Starfleet continues to fail on every level. Hmm. You know that's cute. And I walk a little bit closer, but I have a rebuttal. And as soon as I'm in range, I'm going to tail whip her. Okay. And I believe that's one of your weapon or your... It's an unarmed attack, basically, right. but okay. I do get uh, piercing one. So if she's got natural resilience... Now, to be clear, it is still non-lethal. Just yes. so we're all clear, it's non-lethal. <laughs> all right. So uh, it is a opposed daring security... Okay. Uh, difficulty one. And I do have a focus here. Uh, I'm going to spend one momentum for three dice. Okay. That's momentum five. five. Yep. So that... she needs to get four successes here or okay. I hit her. And sorry, that was daring or that was fitness. Uh, secure? Daring security. For daring her. security. My bad. Daring security. And she has a focus. But not enough. Right. So I'm content with saying that it's enough to stun her and for me to grab her. But if you actually want me to roll the damage, I can. Nah. That's uh, that's enough. She uh, attempts to bat it. She attempts to raise the power wrench threateningly. Only to get tail slapped. And 
so hard that she falls against one of the consoles, bangs her head, and is knocked out. Hmm. Should have listened. And then I just pick her up like she's like a doll and head back to the shuttle. A six foot five doll roughly as wide as you are, but yeah. I mean, I <laughs> got know, two feet on her. It's, it's you know, yeah. she's yeah, she's, she's small. Also, lack of uh, effective grav plating now does help, but we're mm-hmm. not going to tell the boys that, are we? <laughs> Even um, then, I have a fitness of 12. I, I think I can carry her. Very well. You all cram into a shuttle uh cram a lot of people into a shuttle pod that probably breaches the uh uh safe passenger limit but you are able to make it out and back to the lunette where um people are going to find themselves in sick bay so we have the doctor and we have a klingon who i wasn't expecting to survive this so i didn't give him a token uh, teach <laughs> teach me to make assumptions, eh? And uh, who else would wish to be in sick bay? I mean, Ember would uh, bring my patient, quote unquote, to sick bay. Okay. Him I'll here. come down to check on him. Okay. This is going to be a very cramped sick bay. Crawford's going to be there too. This is the best Klingon token. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, yes. Her on who is doubly the size. Okay. And Captain Crawford. Okay. Is that everyone who was interested? Yeah, I don't need to be there right now. I don't think I'm just going to take up room in a very small. Understandable. Okay. Uh, so, Galen, your first step is to stabilize the Klingon who has been, for trans- for the safety of his life, has been beamed over with a section of rebar in his torso. Galen's going to look at everyone starting to pile in, and he's going to look to Ember and Crawford and simply say, You're in charge of the shipping station, but this is my sick bay. Please step aside and stay out of my way. I was simply going to offer help to get that rebar out, Doctor. Are you trained in medicine? I have been known to do field medicine, yes. Treat her, and if you do an adequate job, I might let you help me. And as he says that, he's going to take a step back, but two more Galens are going to come out of him. Out of character, Ember actually has a a medicine of three, so, you know. (laughs) And he's just going to look at his duplicates, and they're both not, and they'll start assisting him. Okay. And so yeah. that would, uh, let's see. So uh, an attempt to stabilize the dying Klingon is going to be a daring medicine. I uh, I have I'm difficulty, going to, difficulty of two. I'm going to activate do, 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 alternate subroutines. Okay. I'm kicking in emergency medicine, and it will replace toxicology for now. All right. Um, and for my focuses, I'm going to be doing surgery and emergency medicine. Would those focuses count? Most definitely. Excellent. I get an additional d20. <clears throat> Yay, purposeful talent. Hooray! <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. and quick study. Uh, yes, yes. I believe that would apply. So, and it's daring medicine, you said? Yep, daring medicine. I got three. And what does uh, qu- quick study do again? It just lowers the difficulty, or do I get another dice? I believe that just lowers difficulty because you've already gained a dice. Well, the uh, the way it works, you know. Sorry to back CGM. Yeah, um, that, that's quite all right. I'm still learning the ins and outs, so advice is appreciated. Right. Um. So the way quick study works is, let's say, for example, you're not familiar with um, a medical procedure, or you've got like a literal a literal alien on your your table. Uh, quick study basically ignores any difficulty increase stemming from your unfamiliarity. So it doesn't lower the difficulty, 
But if you weren't, say, familiar with Klingons, there would technically be a difficulty increase, but then Quick Study would get rid of it. Right, okay. and given the fact that Klingons are literally one of the most well-studied species outside of the Federation, I'd say you're pretty familiar with their anatomy, and you have an idea how to remove a fairly sizable impalement. So, right. thanks for the clarification. I don't think it counts in this instance. Cool. That's what I wanted to know, too. Uh, so... Ah, ah, yes, focus the supply. Ooh. Well, that's... Hey, you got, you got these successes you needed? You're good. Yeah, you got the two successes. Uh, with a quick uh, manipulation of your holographic uh, field, you're able to pull the uh, rebar out and are able to apply some s stabilizing agents to the internal bleeding. He's still not in good shape, and it'll take a while for him to fully heal, but he's not going to die anytime soon. I'm just going to smile and look at him, and it's like, Computer, begin playing random playlist of Cleon Victory songs. All right. Uh, uh, the, the sick bay is filled with incomprehensible chanting at very loud volumes. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, sorry? I'll have the other two Galens just tend to the captain as I walk over to uh, the female that was brought in, and I'll look at Ember. Like, well, how is she All doing? Right. Let's see. Let's see what how she's doing, Ember. If you could please, yeah. uh, because this is not life threatening. This could be a control medicine. Oh no, I like my daring. Daring is just okay. fine for me. Daring medicine. <laughs> and I actually have an in-character reason for why I would be daring. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did I take? Uh, I did not. All right. So I don't have a focus here. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, considering she's just knocked unconscious, difficulty zero. Difficulty zero, all right. Yeah, minor concussion, nothing major. And so, uh, you know, when uh, Galen walks over, I have quite literally uh, managed to procure every fluffy pillow imaginable and just, you know, sort of put her in the middle of it, make her all nice and comfortable. And I say, well, she wouldn't come quietly. So, uh, you know, knocked her out, nothing major. There's no, no major concussion, no bleeding in the brain. Figure that uh, she'll learn her lesson when she wakes up and is surrounded by all this fluff. You know how Klingons hate fluff. He'll just raise an eyebrow at her. Interesting. But let me do a diagnostic on her as well. And he's going to uh -huh. do a medical scan. Okay, insight medicine, difficulty of zero. Uh, biology is in the biology, anatomy. Yep, yep, yep. or yes. Uh, maybe not anatomy, but close enough. Mm. Wow. Okay, once again, max out on momentum. Okay. Uh, aside from inhaling six different types of smoke, that her um, internal biology seems to be metabolizing fairly well, uh, the only obvious thing that is wrong with her is a dislocated shoulder. Uh, he'll just do a local uh, numbing of the area and uh, pop it back in. All right. Uh, the unconscious body jerks awake as you do so. Uh, she sits up, bellows, realizes that, A, she's on a Starfleet ship, and holy crap, what are all these pillows doing here? Uh, throws a few of them aside. Uh, looks around, sees the captain and Odok, and she just sort of hangs her head and goes, I am defeated. I accept my failure. I think you should look at this as a chance to have victory for another day, not a defeat. <clears throat> Relying on Starfleet to assist. <laughs> hey, she looks up at no she spitting looks, in the doctor's med bay. Uh, she looks at Ember. You were a worthy foe. I look forward to sparring with you if we get the chance. Oh, well, if you want me to actually show you how to take a punch, you know where to find me on the station. Uh, she bars her teeth, but doesn't do anything more threatening than that. Meanwhile, while all this uh, is happening, uh, the Klingon in the robes is uh, sort of sidling up and Basically, Bellows, is one of these people in here the captain? Or who's in charge? Um, 
That would be me, Ambassador Odok. And who are you? He sniffs. You smell human. Well, that assumption would be correct. I am the commanding officer of both Deep Space 15 and this vessel. Ah, good. Then I am here on representing representing Emperor Kalos as part of our diplomatic agreement to share data gained from whatever victories come from beyond these transwarp hub. Ah, well, it's excellent to meet you. Uh, we'll take the lunette back to the station and we'll find somewhere more comfortable to exchange information, if that's your wish. Yes. Uh, he looks around. Yes, I do believe some peace and quiet is in order. As you wish, Ambassador. And I'll, uh, I'll assume that Peric's back up at the helm's position at this point. Despite uh, everyone's uh, wishes, yes. <laughs> I'll tap my comm badge. Uh, Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Commander Peric. Peric here. Go ahead and turn us around. We're going to head back to Deep Space 15. Aye, aye, sir. Setting course now. Uh, Captain, what about the ship that we came in? Um, Will, can the Lunette reasonably tow this ship if we need to? It has tractor beam strength 2, and the uh, Burrell is, I believe, the same scale. So... Yeah, and can't fight back even if you did. So yeah, would we'll just be. Uh... Um, we'll be, we'll be towing it behind us. All right. And I had presumed that initially, anyway. Yeah. I probably should have checked, but yeah. Okay. Uh, control plus con, please, Peric, because I find this funny, and I'm going to spend threat so that critical is now an eighteen to twenty. Oh dear. Or God. not critical, a complication. <laughs> yeah, sure, that makes sense. Hey. Radiation's interfering with the tractor beam. Mm -hmm. no. Boy. Uh, is this a shipboard tactical system? Uh, I suppose the tractor beam is, but no, this would primarily be helm operation. Now, if someone wanted to assist with the uh, uh, ship... I can assist, since I'll probably be on the bridge. Sure. Um... Just this once, I will allow for the ship and Dolrum to assist. Uh, the ship will be uh, engines plus con, I believe. All right, I can roll for the lunette. What am I All assisting right. with, McCall? Um, so you can either assist with helm operations, which would be uh, control plus con, or you can just work on the tractor beam, which would be control plus security. Let's do the... Um, check to be okay. Oh, and I should say that this is difficulty three to get the ship back in one piece to get the bur burrell back in one piece. Okay, then I'm gonna spend momentum. All right, would my tactical systems focus work? Uh, if you're focusing on tractor beam, then yes. Uh, well, I tried. All right, we have one success so far from the lunette. That's a complication, it is. Oh. It oh, is, no. indeed. Okay. Rip the part. And I assisted, so I can't do anything. Can, can we buy this one off with momentum? Oh, you Plus. can spend it. <laughs> no, you, you can't even spend yeah. determination for the assist <laughs> nope, character. not the assist. I, say, I can't do it. All right, well, I guess it's up to me, so we're all doomed. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, well um, it's not a complication, so, but... Yeah, it's not a complication, thankfully. Uh, let's see. Oh. Well, it's still three successes, so we yeah. got there. I just my complication. Yeah. Three successes plus a complication. Um, this close to end of session, I'm not even going to worry too much about the complication, other than the fact that a sudden uh, shift of the gravity systems sends Janus 2, which is the nearby... Uh, ge ge ah, geothermically, uh, geographically unstable planet. Uh, sort of hurtling at you at an unpredictable angle, causing a immediate shift of uh, of uh, course. 
Well, that's hurtling as fast as a planet can go. I just look at Galen down in sickbay as we lurch around. Uh, Doctor, I think I say this with all good intentions. Maybe you should check on Peric's sense of inner ear. Yes, the issues he's having with pilot in the ship seem to be increasing. Ted and Brown Says has a sick the... bay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really don't suppose you could send up a copy, or one of your copies, with... Stronger? How do you know I can do that? I haven't done that in front of you. Maybe he's read your tech specs. I most definitely did. <laughs> well, didn't you say that you could split into three while we were all in sickbay? He did. Yeah, oh, yeah, I did. Thank you. I just sort of hold out a hand to the doctor. If you give me the hyper, I'll go administer it. He will uh, fill one up and uh, hand it to Ember. Apologize if that was overly meta. Uh, all <laughs> early installment weirdness. I, I forgot I did it in the sick bay earlier. Sorry. Nah, you're fine. Yep. Yeah, Ember. As Ember leaves, I'll just kind of turn to Gale and be like, for a Starfleet officer, he really doesn't have his sea legs, does he? Mm, well, I w I'm trying an experiment on him actually right now. He kind of raises an eyebrow. I gave Ember a placebo. I want to see how he reacts. Alrighty. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes then. <laughs> in the quarters um, trying his best to maintain a level head um, Lieutenant Sullivan Barrett uh, opens the door to, to admit uh, Ember uh, Master Chief you are a lifesaver I, I, mean, I, I presume you're that you go ahead although, uh, uh, it's, I see you've got the hypo there. Um, I was expecting the doctor. I'll, I'll take it. I, just please. This is really rough. All right. Well, uh, I uh, I just sort of shrug and say this probably isn't going to do anything. But there you go. And you know, I kind of do that shh against your neck. Ah. Oh. Oh. Compared to some doctors I've had, that's actually not the worst bedside manner I've seen. Uh, I so, mean, if you want, I could, like, lay you on the floor, set up some pillows, maybe some scented candles. Are there scented candles on this ship? No, they're banned by Starfleet regulations. I was being sarcastic. Right. Well, I I'm doing much better now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I'm just going to point out the fact that you don't call me sir. I am outranked by even an ensign, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, oh yeah, I no, I I've heard the joke before. You you work for a living, isn't isn't that what you do? I mean, I call it work for a living, but I think as we all have now realized, it's more or less cleaning up certain lieutenant commanders' messes. Out of character. I'm sorry for picking on Perek, but you've made it too easy. I know. I, I deserve <laughs> every bit of it. Yeah, this is the pick on Perek episode. Um, as this as this goes on, it's another te uh, because you have a large thing in tow and c keeping things trying to keep them as steady as possible. It's about a 20 minute flight back to the station. And I've tortured Perek enough, so I'm going to say that docking is as good as it can be with a damaged airlock. Uh, still I'll going park to in a different one, because I'm clearly going to have to fix it. Yes, you are. Um, perhaps in one of the dry dock equipped docking bays. That sounds uh, great. Yep. Station has four of them. Should you ever decide to actually build your own ships. If you ever get the personnel or the desire to do so. I might allow Probably. it. We'll Probably wait. shouldn't have put that in my head, but nah, but we'll talk about that another time. Indeed. It also requires parts. Yes, lots of parts. Okay. So we can cut we'll cut to the conference room for what I think is the last scene of the episode. Alrighty then. So the captain or the uh, Captain Cog 
is still unconscious in sickbay uh, due to temperamental differences. Uh, the chief engineer has declined to join. However, the rest of you shall be here. Conference room. Ooh, is this the Saratoga? No, it's Deep Space 15. Shh. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so figuring out tokens for the first time is always fun. Um, so we have Mander. We have Chief. If you don't want to be here, please let me know. I'm assuming the either Galen or one of his copies will show up. His copies are limited to sick bay. Ah. Science officer, Master Chief, and finally Ambassador Otok. Odoc. change that. All of you look very small in those chairs. That's okay. <laughs> I will fix that later. Um, you see that the Klingon has chosen not to change out of his uh, smoke-damaged uh, cloak. Um, as he will um, blindly find his way through. Um, you can... Uh, either one of you will be leading him, or he will follow Rami, whichever you choose. Galen would lead him. All right. As during the leading, it's hold on, it's a good thing you make sound. Otherwise, I can't smell you. Well, I could have the computer replicate some scented herbs that I could just keep around me. Mm. We'll see how long this station of yours is going to last. Hopefully as long as you. <laughs> or longer, even. Could be. Ah, he makes his way into the conference room. Captain! On behalf of my... On behalf of the captain, and even in her own way, Lieutenant LeCall, thank you for saving us and bringing me on board. I look forward to working with you. And die with you, Ambassador. Um, you said you came here because you had information about, I believe, victories was the term you used to share with us? Uh, victories to come. This is a, this is a new frontier, and, who, and only Kalos knows what might lie beyond these Borg portals. Whatever comes through it, we shall fight it and face it together. And, of course, whatever knowledge you gain has to be shared as per the treaty between your Starfleet and us Klingons. Of course. I should warn you, of course, Captain. The... I am not the official Klingon representative that the, M that the Chancellor has sent. He will probably arrive in a probably a month's time or so. Hmm. I was sent here by I was sent here on a vision granted by Kalis. And it is here that I believe that I can do the most good for the Klingon Empire. Well then, please uh proceed with what you have to say. He shrugs. I don't have much to say cuz nothing's happened yet. But whatever ha all I know is that the ambassador coming from the Chancellor may not be one that is trustworthy. He has held the ear of the previous Chancellor, too. One who had murdered Martok. May, may Kalis hmm. guard his soul. But, if he is to remain on this station as I, our working relationship will be tense. But, I will work through it on my honor and he bangs his fist against his bare chest. <laughs> well, well, you might have your qualms with this other ambassador. I'm so we can work out some kind of eerie piece, but um, do you believe he's not to be trusted just because he wasn't chosen by this 
out of character. You said Emperor Emperor Kalis? Uh, uh the uh, Chancellor, um, I believe his name was Lem Tor. Uh, re- recent political upheavals in the Klingon uh, High Command has a new uh, Klingon Chancellor has taken over about five years ago, I believe. Okay. The previous okay. one had been found had uh, the previous one, uh, Jim Pak, had sent the Klingons to war with the neighboring Kinshea against okay. Starfleet's wishes. Uh, he led the genocide of the Kinshea, uh, found, later was found to have poisoned Martok, take the throne that way, and led to a brief but bloody civil war, which has led this new chancellor to take over. <sighs> Klingon history, 101. <laughs> Huzzah. Yeehaw. Okay. Um, okay. If there is nothing else, Captain, I wish to rest. It has been a very interesting day. <laughs> that it has, and I believe I should be getting some of my rest as well, as per the orders of the doctor here. Yeah, then just look at the captain's smile. He was like, I will be making sure that the good ambassador here, it, his quarters are near mine, so if he needs assistance in getting around... He simply wants to talk to someone without an offensive odor. I'll be made ready or available for him. <laughs> Seems like a good arrangement. Uh, Ambassador Odok? And he kind of gets up. It was a pleasure to meet you. Captain. And he will grip your, uh, he'll grip your hand in the warrior's grip. And I'll squeeze back just as hard as he is. Kapla. Kapla. And as he walks out the door, uh, you hear him yell, Computer girl, where are my quarters? And then Rami will appear beside him and say, Allow me to guide you, Ambassador. Uh, Galen's going to hand a data pad to Ember. What am I looking at, Doctor? Containment protocols for the specimens I'm having brought aboard to the station when they arrive. A multitude of different animals, uh, insectoids, and something I think Doctor, you'll why do you need a cartelian for... Why? Oh. Just... You know that They're... this animal is banned in the Federation. We're not in it's... the Federation. But they're excrement. Okay, it's fair great. point. We are not technically in the Federation. Fair point. Their dried excrement great, make great painkillers. If I cannot uh, use our medicine for species we encounter on the site, I have to find alternatives. But you should be more concerned with the name underneath. Tribbles. I'm sorry, but I just... There's actually Tribbles list. It's, sir, I, I'm just going to make a, a security declaration here that any Tribbles, if I spot one that is outside of your sick bay, I will enact the second great Tribble hunt. It, oh. uh, sorry, GM... Uh, GM Emptor here. Uh, ever since their reappearance on Deep Space Nine, uh, the Tribbles have been declared a biohazardous species, and sh- um, follow strict uh, containment pro- pro- containment protocols and what to do should a Tribble be found outside said um, containment field. Uh, yeah, hmm. said containment field. For some of the creatures, they are carnivorous, and the Tribbles make perfect feeding for them. I have had little success using replicated food, and as since most planets don't have livestock anymore, triples are the next best things. I feel like I've heard this story before. It involved an aquatic species and something on the Amalthea, but like I said, Doctor, as long as these things stay contained, it's fine. But again, if I have to do a second great triple hunt, you're on my shit list. You can also neuter and spade them so they can't reproduce. Well, if you're using them pets. as a food source, isn't that the point? Well, if someone wants a pet. His hand. Mm-hmm. Doctor, can I have one as a pet? Captain? Um. As long as we're absolutely sure that it's not going to be reproducing, I don't necessarily see the harm. Oh, you're so glad that the Klingon is not here for this. Yeah, I was going to say. Um... <laughs> PTSD flashbacks, and it's great. Uh, I like the Klingons. They're basically the Australians during the emo wars. <laughs> Just so it's out there, 
from an engineering perspective, tribbles have a tendency to gather near sources of heat, which usually means we find them in the AP- EPS system. Um, well, rather, their remains. I mean, nothing can touch plasma and live. But I would love it if I didn't have to dig out furry remains from our power system. Wait a second, wait a second. Prek, are you saying that if I were to light myself on fire, I could literally attract tribbles to me? Potentially. I like this idea. We're going to try it later. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm super glad to have contributed. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we can't have scented candles, then those se- the same regulations pertaining to combustibles might apply to you, Master Chief. If we don't have scented candles, I'm finding some if we're doing this. <laughs> Captain, this is your ship. <laughs> you no one's going to be lighting themselves on fire. <laughs> Fair Galen well. just starts writing down some stuff on a pad. <laughs> Chief Emperor, they should be well contained. This is just protocol on their transportation from the ship to sick bay. Very well. And as long as the captain doesn't have any objections, I'll approve it. I'm fine with what he wants to do. Very well. Anyone else have any security surprises? I don't know. Stowaways? People not showing up for ships? Or shifts? Uh, I don't know. Phasers where they shouldn't be? Master Chief, what's this I hear on this report that you want to change out the fa- Type 3s for compression rifle? Well, yeah. As I told uh, certain crewmen, I have experienced uh, all too often that uh, regular Type 3s do not work within a dampening field. Compressions do. So, you know, if something unthinkable happens and uh, a dampening field or other some sort of uh, anti-weapon sort of field is put around the station, we'll still be able to fire back with compression phasers. Solid idea. Although, make sure that there's a few Type 3s in all the lockers. We don't want to get rid of them all. Oh, indeed. They, uh, they make for excellent training tools, if nothing else. Indeed. Um, at some point, I I do have a personnel request, given that this outpost is going to be at the forefront of any exploration that we're going to do, especially if we're going to have some Klingon uh, friends. Friends. That he, using quotation marks, then thinks, be- or air quotes, and then thinks better of it. Um, I happen to know that there were a couple of exceptionally skilled technicians on the uh, construction crew. I might like to keep at least one around just for regular maintenance purposes, if that's okay, Captain, Commander. I... Uh, who is this personnel, might I ask? Uh, let's see. Adam pretends to type in... Uh, type in something even though he had not walked in with the pad uh, um, Ensign Errol Errol, yes uh. I'm gonna, if there's data pads I'm going to grab one, is there an Ensign Errol on the manifest for Deep Space 15? Uh, d- um, are you asking that aloud or are you typing it in? Uh, typing it in Alright, uh, Ensign Errol is cur- uh, currently listed as supposed to have departed on the USS Foundation, one of the uh, uh, one of the construction ships. Did it, did it leave the Foundation for the Starbase? Yes, it is. Act- yes, it is like that. Excellent. Uh, Lieutenant Barnett, it says that Ensign Errol is left on the Foundation from the Starbase. Hey, time for really bad social check, everybody. Oh, oh, um, yeah, I, like, I, I, um, hmm. I guess there, there was a mix-up in the records. I mean, I, I, like, I thought they were still posted here. I can double-check this, um, yeah, well, I'm, have no good explanation. I'll just turn in my chair very slowly and look at you with the look that says, "Really?" Oh, Dolrum's doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Captain. Well, no, no, I'm doing the same. Captain, uh, if I may. 
Lieutenant Aral is listed as a, as, a sco- as a score. I currently have no score uh, species as, uh, as regular assigned crew or visiting civilians. However, I am reading one score life sign on board. Yeah. Are you saying we have a stowaway on this station, Rami? It would, ap- it would appear that way, Captain, but I am not uh, permitted to make such a call, as she nods towards Master Chief Ember. Right, I'm going to have to talk with you about that later, after I do the whole Why I Hate Holograms counseling session. So, Lieutenant, I'm going to ask you straight up, do we have a stowaway on this sh- on this station? Oh, that would depend upon the protocol we're using to define stowaway. <laughs> yes, <laughs> your answer is yes, Lieutenant. <laughs> By by some technical interpretations, uh, and this is where my debate focus is coming in. By some technical interpretations that are uh, very uh, that are very stringent, we uh, one could well consider it. However, of the mission of the outpost and the overall enthusiasm it's going to take for this level of exploration, that surely the spirit is of the lieutenant. You're taking yourself a bigger hole. I just turned to the captain. Captain, before we answer this problem, I just want to know one thing. Am I still in charge of a senior staff exercise schedule? You are, Master Chief. Good. Then, Lieutenant, you're going to report tomorrow at 4 a.m., and you're going to be running until I say stop. (laughs) Rami? Yes, sir. What happened... Where is this stowaway currently? Uh, just once. Uh, she appears to be taking up re- refuge in one of the unused rooms near uh, the cellar cartography area. Are there holometers online? Uh, coverage is Do currently you... patchy in that area, but you should be able to materialize close to it. I have a quick query uh, before we go off and, you know, prosecute a stowaway. Uh, this Ensign Erwal was her name? Was that the... the Erwal? Or something Erwal. like that. Yeah. Alright, well, Ensign Erwal was a construction technician uh, aboard the station during its construction, yeah? They, they were supposed to be transferred out with the Foundation because assignment over, correct? Uh, if that's the case, and presumably she's not deserting... Um, I could use the extra hands, especially given the uh, messes I made for myself to clean up uh, my first day. How much well, more do we have right now? Just out of curiosity. We have five. I'd like to create the advantage that something in this room sparks. I don't care what it is, just something in this room sparks. <laughs> Caleb explodes. <laughs> one of the, also one of the, a few that I didn't cause. One of the hollow, as Rami materializes around the captain, one of the hollow emitters sparks and she fritzes and only her torso and above appear. She looks down. This is highly irregular. This is growing <laughs> pains. Nothing's been tested yet. This is totally expected. I will I will fix this, but I could use the extra pair of hands. It's out there. It's clearly a security issue. I just wanted to put... We'll talk with them first and figure it out from there. Uh... Unless any of you have any other questions or concerns to bring up to me, uh, you're dismissed. Excellent. I have three days of repair work to do. I'll help you. you visit this individual. I'm going to come with you, Doctor. I'll race you there. Yeah, that's cheating. We all know it. (laughs) You'll just give her a wink and immediately disappear. (laughs) Okay, so Galen Poof gone. Uh, Master Chief is going to run. Is anyone else going to find this stowaway? Oh, I, I suppose be. I should go along, too. Okay. All right. I'm not. Okay. So, sorry, those people are talking over one another. So I heard Galen, Bar- Barnett, and Ember? Mm-hmm. Uh, Crawford is going uh, as well. Crawford. Ooh. Cool. Okay. Um, I don't have a cargo bay yet, so we'll just do this in... Stellar cartography. (laughs) 
You said it was spotty. Can I make a roll to see how well my program transfers over? Sure. We can do that. I have an interesting idea if it gets a complication. Uh, control engineering? I think that would be a wise sentence. Okay. I don't know the difficulty, sorry. <laughs> I sorry, I forgot I was busy copying tokens and forgot, but two successes is more than enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh you find Lieutenant or you find Ensign Ural uh in a fairly spacious and uh, currently unused cargo room. Uh that looks like it could be converted into any sort of science C type. Science or engineering fabrication bay. I want to do the horrible thing of appearing behind her and just saying, hello. Okay. So you guys aren't here yet. It's just Galen. Okay. Uh, she literally squawks, uh, puff, beats her wings twice, and darts away really quickly. Uh, she'll turn and look at you and go, who are you? Well, who are you? I'm Lu I'm Ensign Aral. I was oh. part of the crew that built this station. I... Oh. Who are you? I have to thank you for building this station. I am the Chief Medical Hologram, Galen. Uh, she still keeps her difference. Ah, yes, I've heard of them. I heard of the computer science -y people talking about your program. Uh, uh, she will out quickly. Is, you were everyth is everything to your liking? Yes, except for one oddity I'm finding. What is that? You're not supposed to be here. No, I'm not. And she sits down. And she'll just sort of baka a couple times. He'll sit down with her, you know, cross his legs. And he like he'll still have that soft smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, roll me a presence command, or in this case, presence medical, if you wish, to use some sort of counseling kind of subroutine. Sure. And by the way, this is a scene shift, so we've dropped one momentum. I think we're now momentum two? Uh, yep. Persuasion, because he was just wanting to talk with her and calm yeah. her down, maybe? Yeah. Persuasion would work. Excellent. Ooh. All right. Hmm. Uh, yep, so that was a... Yep, so I believe you get one momentum out of that, and that was a difficulty one. Again, if I don't say the difficulty beforehand, please tell me it's one of the habits I need to get into. Okay. Um, I just wanted to start using some of these cool systems that I built, you know? Like, they want me to build things, they want me to run the test algorithms, and then they want me to move on to the next structure or station or system. I... I have a degree in astrophysics, you know, and also uh, an engineering degree in starship design. But that's not you, good enough, no. Do you think what you just did, though, is going to be good for you? Jumping from station to station or starship to starship. And they always say that one has to take risks if you want to get promoted to what you want. So, there's, I'm risking it. There's taking risks, but then there's doing something foolish. I'm not saying what you did could be, but others may view it as is. Uh, speaking as others, uh, the cargo bay door hisses open, and in pile the rest of the, uh, oh, the away team, for lack of a better term. Galen will just wave at them. Like, that's the captain. That's <laughs> chief of security. She, That's our first officer, I believe. She buries her head in her hands. <laughs> I've done screwed this up, haven't I? I think if you're sincere in talking to them, and you're honest, you will still have to have repercussions happen, but be honest. Uh, she'll sigh, and she'll stand up, and stand at attention. Captain, Ensign Ural reporting... Uh, Reporting for duty at the captain's pleasure. 
Well, the first thing I'd like to know, Ensign, is why you're aboard the station and not the USS Foundation. Uh, she will gesture down the hallway to where the stellar cartography bay is. Says, I want to put my degrees to you, sir. I have all this education, and assembling stations is good, but I actually want to use them for once, sir. I'm just... I may have erred in my discretion. And how exactly did you get here without... Uh, the Foundation noticing you were gone? Well, sir, because there are a significant number of holographic emitters being deployed on all the starships, it was a fairly rudimentary thing to program a simple AI with my physical parameters. It literally walked on board with them, and assuming there's been no problems with their holographic systems, it might still be in operation somewhere. Probably faking a sleeping or a hibernation period. Out of character, who's the captain of the USS Foundation? I have not come up with a name. Let's call him Captain Jacobs. Alrighty. If we were to send a communication now, how long would it take to get to the Foundation? Well, it's traveling by slips. Uh, assuming it's traveling by slipstream, sir... It would have left three days ago. Quite a while. Yes, sometime, sir. <sighs> well, I feel it. it's my duty to let your captain know what's actually happening. But until that communication gets there, I guess we'll need a s spare set of hands until... The majority of the crew gets here next week. Her feathers ruffle a bit in, excite in a bit of excitation. Sir! Uh, she stands up even more ramrod straight, if that's entirely possible for her. I will work under whoever you assign me, sir. I accept full responsibility for my actions. Uh, out of character, uh, Peric. Where would Peric be right now? Probably on the bridge repairing the or on the yeah. in ops, or maybe in the reactor room. Who knows? There's a there's a tactical console that needs replaced before I can move on to fix an arrow. <laughs> uh, Captain Crawford to Lieutenant Commander Perrick. Perrick here. It seems like I am. Um, oh, like you wanted. You're getting a new set of hands. Um, and this will still be on comms. Ensign Errol. Uh. Report to the bridge. There's our chief engineer could use some help replacing a tactical console. I, uh, she spreads her wings in joy and lets out a quick caw in happiness. Yes, sir. I I won't let you down, sir. Um, sorry, sir. And she looks at um, ah, Lieutenant Sullivan Bar Barnett. Sorry, sir. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry. And I, she sort of. This is kind of my bad here. Yeah, it had to. It was going to happen in retrospect, as she will awkwardly sidle past all of these, literally everyone who could potentially cause her career to suicide, as if she hasn't done so already. And as soon as the door closed, she uh, runs away as fast as she can to the nearest turbo lift. After she does leave the room, uh, Captain, I'm. It, like her putting her skills to use in engineering too, but if it's possible, you know, I did get a chance to review at least some of her record information after I found out she was here, and she does have some pretty commendable degrees. The score do not slouch with their scientific knowledge, so okay to at least get her down into the lab part time. Be useful for our further exploration missions i'm i wasn't uh, i certainly didn't make that up and he'll kind of you know like pinch the bridge of his nose with his thumb and pointer fingers just like well we'll figure something out as it goes along but as for now she's just going to help with repairs Captain, why don't we go and send that message to the Foundation? 
with the relays that being set up still, it could take a while to get through subspace. Of course, uh, you take care of that, XO. Um, I'm going to do what the doctor has told me and get some sleep. It's been a long couple of weeks, and he's going to exit. I'm going to head to the bridge and make that uh, communication. And unless there's any other scenes, I believe this will be a good place to end. Woo! First episode in the can. All right. Huzzah. Everyone do survives. You, uh, do you want me to kill the recording here? Leave it yeah. open? No, so thanks everyone. And if this ever makes it on the internet, thanks random strangers for listening. Right. I hope to see you all again. Bye, stream.